Just uh, bear with me for a second here, having some difficulties on my end. Alright, welcome back to the stream, and today we're taking a look at a game that I've been putting off for far too long. Ooh, also, boy, it's very hot in my room. We're going to have to turn on the air conditioner in a bit. Anyway, this is Solasta, Crown of the Magister. It's a game I played in a demo form, I want to say last year, during the last Steam Summer Game Festival, which the new one's coming up soon, so hey, maybe something new will show up. And this is a... Basically, it's a D&D &D game. It's using the 5th edition rule set. 
It's not using the like full 5th edition rules, it's using its own world, it's not doing any of the pre-established settings. But it's much closer, I feel like, to actually replicating the actual feel and actual mechanics of the actual tabletop RPG as opposed to Pathfinder or Baldur's Gate. Like, Baldur's Gate is also running 5th edition. It has all the setting stuff, but it's very different feel-wise. It has a lot of the same sort of niche things with it kind of pulled over from Divinity, but it's not, like, identical. Pathfinder is closer, I feel like, in feel to the actual game, but it still plays differently. It still has limitations. This one actually sort of goes all in, as far as I can tell. So, let's hit up a new adventure, shall we? Sorry, it's just really hot in here. Like, what, what's the temperature? Hold on. It's 80 degrees outside right now, so ugh, it's not very comfortable in my room. So, tutorial, new adventure. This screen allows you to start a new adventure known as a campaign in the world of Salasta. More campaigns are planned after the release of the game, which it's out now. It's actually, it was in early access for a while. It's actually out. You have to select four level one characters to start this elastic campaign. So we've got Crown of the Magister, Authentic, Story, Explore. What is this? Let's see, com for exploration and combat will be simplified. For players unfamiliar with tactical RPGs or the rule set. For players who want the authentic tabletop rule set. Players who are ready for a harder challenge and looking to defy the odds. You will suffer a lot. Crown of the Magister is the normal campaign, but there is also user campaign stuff, which is pretty cool. There's a dungeon maker over here on the side. You can see I'm circling over there. So you can make your own campaigns. You can do your own stuff. You can make your own dungeons, which is super cool, I might add. But for now, let's stick with Crown of the Magister. I'll delve into that a bit later, I think. Party setup. This pool lists the available characters that you can select for your adventures. Some characters have been generated by us if you want to quick start your adventure, but we advise that you create your own party of four. So I will not do that. I will create one character, but I will select uh, three other ones here. So let's, let's actually go back. What are we going to pick? Let's pick a wizard. How about a rogue? Cleric? And uh, let's make something simple. Actually, what are my what are the races from the other classes right now? We got, uh, I guess, human. Probably, probably halfling, elf. So we have our selection of races here. We have Hill Dwarf. Hill Dwarves are naturally skilled miners and craftsmen gifted with keen senses, deep intuition, and remarkable resilience. Blocky and sturdy, they are fierce warriors and keepers of their ancestral culture and traditions. Or Snow Dwarves. They're sturdy and adventurous, adapted to harsh terrain and low temperatures. Blocky, agile, and sturdy, they are fierce warriors and keepers of their ancestral culture and traditions. So what's the difference? Ah. So I have Constitution and Wisdom for a Hill Dwarf, or Constitution and Dexterity for a Snow Dwarf. Let's see, proficient with Heavy Crossbows, and Snow plus two to Constitution Saving Throws. So instead of getting plus one hit point per level, I get proficiency. Got it. Half elves. See, offspring of the human refugees from Termar and the Salastan elves, half elves have the strength of their parents, versatile, charismatic, and gifted with dark vision and fey ancestry. They're always torn between two cultures. Oh, we... There's, there's no option. Okay. So... Bonus to charisma and two other skill... 
or two other scores by one point each. Bonus skills, choose any two skills. Dark Vision, Fey Ancestry, which gives you immunity to sleep and advantage against charm. Okay, Human. Plus one to all ability scores. Originally born on Termar and brought to Solasta before the Cataclysm, humans have adapted to their new world thanks to their unique talents. Able to live anywhere and take any job, they are versatile above all else. High Elves. High Elves are the descendants of the people who ruled Solasta for centuries. They are trained to use magic very early and have a gift for languages. They receive their traditional martial training of their people with swords and bows. Dex and Int. Oh, right, and they also don't have to sleep. They sleep only for four hours, they just meditate. Sylvan Elves. Instead, they get Dex and Wiz. Born and raised in the eastern forest of Salasta, Sylvan Elves are trained to survive in the wilds and are particularly apt to survival. And then we have Halflings. Marsh halflings have lived in the tradition of their ancestors, who used to move, fight, and even sleep in swamp terrain. They are particularly sturdy compared to their island cousins, while being generally less likable and certainly no less courageous. Dexterity and Constitution? Island halflings are the children of adventurous halflings who left the northern marshes to venture south and settle in the sunny islands. Discreet and brave, they are inclined to be affable and get along well with others. So their dexterity and charisma. I think... I'm thinking Snow Dwarf. And I'll go with a fighter, because that'll make, that'll fill out the uh, traditional class. Fighter, r fighter, rogue, wizard, cleric. Class selection. A character class determines a profession, granting specific features listed on the right. New powers and even subclasses are granted at higher levels of experience. Each class also offers a set of equipment which you can customize. So, just to be perfectly clear, I'm not particularly familiar with the 5e rule set. I have played a wee bit of it, so I know a little bit of the rule set. I played more 3.5 than it, so I know a couple of the things that they brought over from 3.5. But, generally speaking, I am not very in-depth on the 5th edition rules. Okay, so, clerics. Clerics are the servants of their chosen deity. In exchange for their faith and service, they are granted miraculous powers as long as they constrain themselves to following their god's creed and perform their religion's rituals. Paladins are elite warriors who have sworn unbreakable holy oaths to fight evil. In addition to their weapons and armor, they wield divine powers and clerical spells. Rogues are versatile first and foremost. They use their natural talents to master various skills and find their own way to thrive. Generally resourceful, they are known for their cunning and their ability to launch deadly sneak attacks. Wizards spend their lives studying magic, learning more and more powerful and wondrous spells. Despite their weakness in physical combat, their magical abilities make them dangerous foes. Wanderers of Solasta's wilderness, rangers are trained survivalists, fierce in battle and stealthy hunters. Excellent trackers and archers, they also have some spellcasting ability. And Fighter. Fighters are trained in the arts of combat. They are adept with most weapons, but often choose to specialize. All fighters can use armor, shield, and ranged weapons. Yeah, that's the, that's the hope, yeah. It, the nice thing about video games is you don't need to know the whole rule set in order to play the game. Let's see, uh, action surge, regain main action immediately, take a short or long rest to recover it. I get an archetype at level 3, 4, ability score, or bonus feat. Extra attack, ability score, ability score, indomitable. So I guess it's a low level, because I'm only getting up to level 9. Unless at level 10 I pick the, uh, the multi-class thing. So let's go with this. Chainmail or leather longbow arrow times 20. Chainmail, longsword, and shield, or two-handed, light crossbow, hand axe times two, dungeoneer's pack, or explorer's pack. This has a backpack, five torches, ration pouch, healing remedy, projectile parts, small smith toolkit, or torches, rations, potions of healing, antitoxin, and projectile parts. 
let's go with this. It seems fine. Oh, uh, level 10 is the max? Okay, so it's relatively low level then. It doesn't? I can't remember. Was that 4th edition or 5th edition where at level 10 you hit like a new tier and you sort of specialize into a different class or something? Background Selection A background determines a character's history prior to their adventuring life. The background offers equipment and proficiencies, but also the ability to select personality flags. These determine the social behavior of the character during narrative sequences. Hmm. So I know there's like a background system in 5th edition, which is actually like a full thing. But, let's see, also the ability to select personality flags determines social behavior. So we got, oh, interesting, okay. In addition to your personality flags, you must also select two personality flags as dispatched on the ethical axes of Law, Chaos, and Good and Evil. In Solasta, the alignment is a second form of personality customization. Pragmatic, kind, casual cynicism. Okay. Uh, you can reinforce a personality trait by selecting the same flag twice. Flags will not affect gameplay, choices, or dialogue options, but simply modify the way your character speaks, their tone, and manners. Uh, the resulting personality is summarized at the bottom left of the screen, where the deepest color represents the strongest personality. Sadly familiar with AD&D, flags are flavor. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Good. Good to know. Alright, so what was I? Was I a spy, a sellsword, a philosopher, a lowlife, lawkeeper, ursa, academic, or acolyte? Oh, I know what I was. So let's go through these. Oh, look at this. Formal and casual. Background personality flags. Look at this. Actually, uh, while, I, while I'm over this, I'm going to check something real quick. I'll be right back. All right, so, academic. You had two passions growing up, history and magic. <sighs> your teachers saw your interest and ensured that your potential was nurtured. Your mission in life is to discover the secrets of the past, both magical and mundane. So you took your backpack and set out to discover the wonders of Salasta for yourself. You spent your life in the service of a temple to a specific god or pantheon of the gods. You act as an intermediary between the realm of the holy and the mortal world, performing sacred rites and offering sacrifices in order to conduct worshippers into the presence of the divine. Born among the lords of your people, you have received a higher education. Your manners and speech are formal and rigid, and you have difficulties when dealing with low-ranking individuals. A life of privilege gave you enough perks to start your adventuring life with a comfortable package. Oh, it actually does things too. So like this gives you a notebook, a little bit of gold, this gives me a crafting start kick. This gives me a bunch of money. As a former deputy, you have an instinct for spotting trouble and, for and the force of personality to nip it in the bud. After a while, keeping the peace in the Principality of Mazgarth, Though, dealing with petty criminals every day just wasn't enough. You took what you had learned and embarked on a life of travel and discovery. Born in the streets, you have always been discarded by most commoners and learned to survive with close to nothing. 
This made you tough and resourceful. Manners and education are not your strong suit, but you've learned to compensate with other qualities. Ah, you get proficiency with a thieves tool. Okay. You've spent almost all your life reading books and learning about the world of Solasta and even others. You're passionate about knowledge and an expert when it comes to understanding. Now you've decided to take a new path to explore and discover the world by yourself. Cells. Cellsword. You spent your youth in a company of mercenaries, and since then your fighting skills have been put to the service of gold. Companionship and bloodshed have forged your character and made you both tough and bitter. You spent years working as a low-level diplomatic aide, learning the tricks of spycraft between the Principality, the New Empire, and the Kingdom of Galavan. You have chosen not to take sides and never became an official spy, but you have maintained your skills necessary for your emancipation. So let's go with Sellsword here. Uh, let's see, violence and cynicism, I think. I'm kinda I'm kinda jaded. I've been in the army long enough that. Yeah, let's go with that. I've been in the army long enough that it's really sort of rubbed me down to the core. I'm there's nothing left, there's no outer shell. It's just raw emotion interacting with the world and having seen the worst in living things, I know that I'm no different. Let's go... Tensi to scoff at principles and values. I think pragmatism is the best one to go for here. Hmm. Cynicism? Yeah, let's go for cynicism. This is gonna be like a... <laughs> yeah, right. Everyone says that until their backs are against the wall. Uh, true additional personality flex in the ethical board. Oh, okay. There we go. Ability scores time. Also, hold on a moment. Apologies, I've basically been trying to get people out the door for the last two hours, and they still haven't left, so... <sighs> I think they're finally going to get out of here now. Yeah, I think they're finally gone. So, ability scores. Ability scores are the six core attributes defining your, where your character excels. Strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. With values from 3 to 20. The bonus under each score is applied to any relevant action. For example, the strength bonus is added to the attack rolls based on strength. 
Choose an ability generation system to find your character's stats. So I can either do dice rolls or point buy. Ability scores can be generated in several ways, either randomly or by using a point system. Classes have a preferred ability score, for example, intelligence for wizards, so make sure your character's highest scores are in their class's primary abilities. All characters' ancestries provide a bonus of some ability scores, leading to an interesting ancestry class synergy. Ability scores can be increased at levels 4, 8, and so on. Fighters can increase even more often. Ooh, okay. This is not a bad roll, actually. 16, 16, 15, 15, 14, 11 is a very good roll. And you can just automatically optimize it. Cool. But very cool. And then you can set it to point by if you want to just spend points to get the scores up. Or I guess standard arrays are... Reroll six ability scores using 46 and keeping the three best rolls. Huh. Weird. I think standard... That's not the standard array, is it? No. See, now, like, I want to check what these buttons do, but also I don't want to drop this roll that I have because this is a really good one. Like, this is a really good set of rolls, and I don't want to drop it if I can help it. <laughs> so, uh... Uh... Yeah, I, I don't want to, but also, like, I want to show it off, but also, ah. Uh... Okay, you know what? I'll make a new character and push Standard Array there. That's what I'll do. This is going to be the character I'll use. Yeah, uh, I thought it was, like, 16, 14, 12, 12, 10, 8, or something like that. Anyway, optimize. I guess I dumped a 16 here, dumped a 15 here to make that 16, so I have a really nice physical stat set, and then I'm pretty solid overall on the mentals. So, some character classes allow the selection of a fighting style, like fighter. This fighting style grants you specific advantages to using combat techniques and equipment. Some character classes are granted a secondary fighting style at higher levels, like fighter probably. When a creature you can see attacks a target other than you that is within 5 feet of you, you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll. Let's go with this. I can actually guard for other people, so that seems pretty cool. Proficiencies. This stage lets you acquire proficiency in various fields of expertise. Your class and ancestry determine a set of proficiencies or range of options to choose from. The right side of the screen lets you choose your proficiencies by type and origin, and you must spend all your points before you can proceed. Most attacks and ability checks use the proficiency bonus to determine your efficiency. This bonus starts at a plus two and increases at levels five, nine, etc. It is added to action rolls where the character is proficient. Saving throws, abilities checks, attack rolls using proficient weapon and magical attacks, and spell difficulty class. Okay. So... Choose two skills from acrobatics, animal handling, athletics, history, insight, intimidation, perception, survival. So acrobatics... Animal Handling, Athletics, History, Insight, Intimidation, Perception, Survival. I'd say probably, if I had to pick two from those, I appear to only be able to pick... Oh, okay, so I'm proficient for my class. So really, I only have Acrobatics, History, Animal Insight, Insight, Perception, Survival. I don't get to pick Intimidation because I get that from my class. This is... Or I get... Wait. 
No, I get that from my background. Because I'm a sellsword. So these are my class ones. Also, yeah, hi. Thanks for stopping by, Cookie Mom. Hope you're having a good day. Although the part of the rule set invalid for role-playing purposes, this element is not used in the Crown of the Magister main campaign. Oh, that's nice. So it actually tells you. Um, let's go with acrobatics. And perception, I think. Background and languages. So what can I pick up as a language? I get one. I have common, dwarvish, and elf, giant, not used, not used, not used. Orc. Ancient language originating from Termar, the lost world of humans. It's been protected and transmitted since the Cataclysm. Let's go with Orc. I think Orc will be useful. So, identity. This final stage of character creation allows you to customize your appearance and identity. You can freely select all available options, and a valid first name is required to complete the character creation process. Oh, look at this. You can roll it. Yeah! Hold on, Bjorn. Ooh, Tall Barrel's a good one. I actually like that. Bjorn Tall Barrel. I better done with work in 30 minutes. I was also diagnosed with ADHD as an adult. Yeah, well, that would do it, wouldn't it? Ooh, look at these faces. So we got face one, two. Oh, that one looks freaky. That's okay. I like this one. That seems fine. I can also make a chick. She looks like a goblin. Yes, this is a... Oh, hey, cool. <laughs> well, no! Bjorn Tall Barrel. There we go. This is a RPG. What is Wonka? Looks like you're wearing a fake. Oh, that's perfect. Which one's that? <laughs> Hold on, beard shape. Okay, well, I'm going with Beer Shape 1. And yes, this is a RPG similar to Pathfinder or Baldur's Gate, but it's based on the D&D 5th Edition rule set, and it's much closer to actually playing the the game. Y you'll see when we actually get into it, but right now it's... Ooh, that's nice hair. Well, I want some luscious flowing locks on my dwarf here. Ooh, that's a good one. I like four. Ooh, yes. Okay, this looks good. Hair shape two. Yeah, let's go with hair shape two. Or no. Yeah, hair shape two. There we go. Look at this. Look at this man. Look at him. Hair color. Man, oh god. That makes it look like it's plastic or something. <laughs> that does not look great. It's fine. It looks like it's like metallic colors, which is weird. I'm gonna be honest, I can barely see the eyes in there. Oh, this is the bad one? Ah. Uh, that's fine. It's fine. Oh yeah, look at those wrinkles. Look at that wrinkle. I've seen many a thing in my years. Oh. Oh, I can change my skin tone too. Like he's a bit too swarthy for a snow dwarf, I feel like. This makes him look like a frost giant. Yeah, there we go. Look at this. I remember. I remember the days of my youth. When I was but a wee lad. The beard no longer than my chest. 
But now look at me, withered and old, like the snow upon a dead tree. Good arms you got. Dive in the dirt now. Light, my friend. Ooh, boy, none of those sound like what I want. You'll get a nice scar. All right, that'll do. Uh, that voice is like, it's like a medium age, like there. I'll remember. Yeah, uh, he's great. He looks, it looks really good, honestly. Like, yeah, this is, this is, he's not old enough to have this voice. He's like, he's medium wrinkle old, like this. Didn't think you could do it. Come on, harder. You'll get a nice scar. All right, and let's go with this. Bjorn was born to a family of four, where he longed for more than his barrel bore. So off he went into the fires of war, and when he returned, a youthful lad he was no more. Yeah! And that's my character. Bjorn Tallbarrow. Now just to check something, let's make a new character here, whatever. Uh, cleric. Ooh, deity. You got Aron, Einar, Marki, and Paki. Pakri. Goddess of law and knowledge. Goddess of life and death. Valor and fidelity. And god of the elements. Alright, so, re-rolling the dice, here's what we can get. Oh, right, I'm a human. Or no, I'm a half-elf. Right, so, point by is... Oh! Oh! Oh my, okay. So you can actually adjust these scores as you will to whatever points you want. But they give you the ability to do free edits, which is pretty cool. Cool. That's really cool. I love that. I think this was in the demo too, but I forgot. But this, yeah, I'm so into that. Okay. So if you had a character from 5th edition that you just want to bring back in because you got like really good roles, you just want to make the new character in this game, you can totally just do it. That's, that, like, that's great. That's great! That's such a good detail! I love that! Alright, so point by is... It, it's the same way it works in all RPGs. You can invest points into your skills to raise them up, and you'll notice that took one, 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 that took two, that took th two. You'll notice that as you go higher, they start costing more. So you can't just... You, you have 27 points to work with, but they aren't evenly distributed. Dice rolls. Let's see, you got the standard array here, which is 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, 8. Okay. That'll just always give you that. Or you can re-roll your dice. Just random numbers. Yeah, baby. By the way, for people who use... People who roll dice to generate the characters are brave and also very stupid. Because I... What was it? Uh, it, it? Like, you... you Sometimes, like, if you do the, um, the 4d6 drop the lowest, then you're generally going to get pretty good rolls. But even then, I'm still getting an 8. Like, even with that. I had a character who... He was a wizard. Called... He was Albert, and we want, I wound up just calling him Albert the Unimpressive because he was a wizard, and his I highest score was an int of, like, 13. So he was barely able to cast his spells at all, and he just was completely useless, effectively. He could do nothing. Because the way we generate the characters was dice rolls. So roll the die and just wound up with shit luck on that one. He died an ignoble death very quickly. 
but his story lives on as a cautionary tale against rolling dice. While you can get a character like Bjorn Tallbarrel, who stands tall thanks to his incredible stat array, you can also get an Albert the Unremarkable. Anyway, let's add Bjorn to the list here. And start the game up. Uh, that looks good. Casting spell slots consumes spell slots. Those classes regain spell slots after a long rest. Just, uh... There we go. Before the Cataclysm, there were no gods on Celasta. No humans, either. You're welcome. Then, the rift opened. Some say it was a magical accident. Or the work of an evil god. No one knows for sure. The Cataclysm destroyed the old High Elf Empire. Manakalin, they called it, and twisted the land beyond recognition. Now, only the brave and the foolish go there, in search of ancient treasures. But something is happening deep in those badlands. Whatever it is, it can't be good. Blunt and to the point. It is the year 124 after the Cataclysm. New states have arisen around the Badlands and crave its treasures. A newly discovered road offers a safer route into the ruined heart of the Empire from the Principality of Mascath, upsetting the balance of power. The Legacy at Council is formed to ensure that this knowledge is shared. It issues a call for agents to explore the Badlands in its name. Okay, I was afraid it was going to just cut. Adventurers flock to Karak Hyflin, the Principality's capital and the home of the Council. Four strangers meet in the Gravekeep's grave cask, close to the Council Chambers. There I am. This beer tastes like donkey piss. Not that I'm complaining. Is this the place for the Legacy Council job? Hope I'm not too late. Ran into a bit of trouble on the way here. Sit. Relax. Perhaps you'd enjoy a pint of this obnoxious ale. If you're here for the Council job, get in line. Though if this Lord Karen doesn't show up soon, I may go looking for him. Another round, barkeeper. Four of your finest flagons of donkey piss, please. Looks like you've been waiting here a while. Indeed. You mentioned something about some trouble. Would you care to elaborate? Well, I was making my way here when three bandits leapt from the bushes with crossbows. They dragged me off to some decrepit prison and tossed me in a filthy cell that smelled of rat piss. Don't know what was holding the place up. Oh, tutorial? Cool. Escape the bandits' prison. Okay, so how do I... Hmm. Oh, this is just a log. Oh, that's super cool. Okay. So how do I... Oh, that was easy. Let's click. I wish they'd mentioned this beforehand. Uh, select your character by clicking on the character in the 3D view on the character portrait. To select the whole party, use the select all button. Which is... At the bottom of the... Portrait display. You can also drag a rectile around one or more characters to select them. To move, left click on the destination. Val destination show a round marker when you mouse over them, and Val destination show a forbidden sign. Right click and drag to rotate the camera view and change your perspective. You can also rotate using the buttons on the compass at the bottom right of the screen or by pressing Q or E. Use WASD or the arrow keys to move the camera around and hold down W while focused on a character to zoom in on them. 
All right, so right click to move it. Middle mouse click to do this. Anything here? I don't see anything. Click on the journal button to open the quest log. This will give you more information on your current objectives along with some useful context. Note that the journal contains much more information than the quest log. Oh, it, I thought it was like, wait, the journal contains the quest log, but oh, contains more information? Okay, so it, it, what it meant was it contains the quest log and also things. The log lists your current objective, which you must complete in order to move the quest forward. You may also have other optional objectives. The log also gives you hints and context to help you understand the subtleties of your quest. Your successes and failures are all recorded here. Quest log. Escape the bandit's prison. Find a way out. There must be a way out of this crumbling prison. The bandits left you in a ruined cell. There must be a weak wall or hole somewhere in one of the other cells. Well, wait, they left me in this cell and I just crawled right out. To crawl through a hole, click the other side. You can get a better view of the other side by rotating the camera, Q or E, or move the mouse by holding down the left button. Your character will automatically kneel, crawl, and stand up as appropriate on the way to the desired location. After moving the camera around to examine your surroundings, you can enter a character and follow you can center on a character and follow them. Either double tap the character's portrait or press tab. Ah, oh, look at this. Oh, I see. So it automatically Oh. Very cool. Well, can't do anything here. Oh, wait, there's an item. Loot. I got a torch. We bring light in darkness. Press and hold the Alt key to highlight various interactable objects, doors, chests, etc. I can't move the camera around while doing that, or at least I can't use the WASD buttons to do that, which is interesting. Highlighted elements are also interactive. The cursor indicates the action that can be performed, pushing, activating, lockpicking, etc. If an action requires a dice roll, the difficulty class will be displayed. <sighs> get, get out, get out there. There we go. Yeah, it was very, it was very nice. It was like, it was fairly simple to get through. Nothing too crazy, but yeah, it was, it was very nice. There's a lot of detail in it. Felt like I was uh, working with the, the old uh, Dungeons and Dragons thing. It, it, this is, it's very well done. This game is actually quite well done. Let's see, to jump up or climb, simply click on the destination. Depending on the character's strength and proficiency with athletics, you can jump and climb between two and five cells. You can always jump over two cells, drop down three cells, and climb up one cell, or climb up easy surfaces like ladders or ropes without any trouble. A character with strength below 15 and no proficiency with athletics cannot jump far enough to reach the chest. A fighter with strength 15 to 20 can jump across three cells, so, a character, so can a character with strength 11 to 14 plus proficiency in athletics. In general, the critical path is always open to characters without superior physical abilities. However, optional loot is sometimes harder to reach. Don't give up, though. You may find another way to get to this chest. God, like, this, like, this is exactly what I'm talking about. There's no way to do this in Pathfinder in Wrath of the Righteous, because the systems just aren't there. Like... You, if you wanted to jump across something, it would be an athletics check, and then... Huh. Yeah, look at that. It'd be athletics check to interact with this, and you just kind of skip over, but it wouldn't really be... It doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's, like, sort of a meshed into the game as well as this one. This one's, like, it's all there, instead of fading to black or cutting out or something. Look at that chest.
Hey, potion of healing. Nice. Yeah, just, just like I said, this feels a lot more like... This feels a lot more like playing the actual tabletop game than either Pathfinder or Baldur's Gate does. Get wrecked, idiots! Click on the chest or other container to loot it. Everything you carry affects your weight gauge, so be wary of reaching your weight limit as this will slow you down a lot. Equipment and light sources must be placed in the appropriate slots before they can be used. Some items can stack in the same cell in your inventory. The maximum number of units depends on the item. Uh, to split a stack of items, drag and drop the sh stack onto an empty cell while holding down the shift key. This will take one unit from the stack. Okay, so shift is single. Ooh, rations. I actually don't have a bow, so... Nice move. That trick with the wall. Glad you're no worse for wear. Why did they change... Why did they change the patients? This council needs to get organized. They have no right to keep us waiting like this. The council is likely busy with important matters of state, and we are not, so have patience. I have a tale to tell as well. I too was attacked, but I put an end to my enemies with blood and pain. Let's hear it then. Don't be shy. You can tell which of these characters is the one I made. <laughs> ah, yes, wolves. Battle starts. Oh, look at that! They got little dice! That's so good. Moving to a point in the yellow area uses your main action to dash. Dash doubles your maximum movement for the turn. However, you cannot use your action to attack or cast a spell. Remember that you can move normally and then decide whether to dash further or to use your action for something else. Okay, so I can move here, which will get me cover. Oh yeah, I could totally just jump over this thing. Where's this third wolf? Why is there... Th why are there three... Oh, I see. Ah, there's the other wolf. Let's dash. Okay, and use power. I can get a second win, which will get me healing. Enter. Ah, you missed, idiot. Do they have disadvantage? To attack an enemy using your default weapon, mouse click over them and left click. You can also cast a sp attack spell or switch weapon configurations and use another weapon. A ranged one, for example. Depending on the character, some special abilities are also available. You try to shove an enemy back or down. Select... Select and shove and choose from the available options. If you shove an enemy backwards into a pit, they'll fall. If you shove an enemy down, they'll be prone, remaining vulnerable until they spend move points to stand up. Yeah, so this is one of the really cool things. Like, uh, Bull Rush, I think, is in Pathfinder, but this one, because it's grid-based, you can actually do stuff like this. <laughs> Yeet! And away it goes. Ah. Oh, he missed. And missed. Ha <laughs> ha. Missed. Idiot. What's my AC? Probably like a 12. Tutorial Dodging. Click Dodge uses your main action and provides the following benefits. Until the start of your next turn, all attackers you can see have disadvantage on their rolls to hit, and you have advantage on dexterity saving throws. Dodge being that one right there. Now, I want to get to this. 
We're dashing. Man, are they really? They're only rolling eight. Yeah, look at that. Disengaging. To avoid an opportunity attack, you can use the disengage action. For the rest of your turn, you can move close to enemies freely without any risk of opportunity attacks. Disengage is your main action, though, so you won't be able to attack or dash during this turn. Alright, so... Oh, it's a big wolf! Okay. Not. Why can't I move? Why can I not move? That's weird. What? What? Okay, it's not letting me move here for some reason. Let me let me load. It might be a bug? Oh, click on the rock. Okay. Oh well, let's uh let's just do that then. Disengage. Proceed. Ah, I see. Ha! Yeah! That's cool. That's cool. What a bunch of namby pambies. You're lucky you weren't attacked by Sorax. Shut your go. Or I'll shut it for you. The Badlands are thick with them. Shape-shifting bastards. Go easy on him. He's just a harmless old drunk. Probably saw lizard folk or dragonborn or something. You think I don't know the difference? All those spines on their backs, those jaws. You've never seen anything like it. Not lizard folk, not troglodyte, not dragonborn. I'm telling you. No one believes in Sorax anymore. Except the Church of Einar, of course. There's a Sorak under every bed, if you believe them. Ah, easy now. Don't mock people for their faith. I'm Read the them chair. books. Soraks are masters of deception, infiltration. Anyone here could be a Sorak. You'd never know. Oh, come on. Huh, <laughs> you'll see. So, anyway, Soraks might be legend, but Orcs are quite real. And not just in the Badlands. I stumbled across a secret settlement right here in the Principality. Oh, that was Co? Bullshit. Oh! I traveled here from the east and left the main highway, hoping to save time by traversing the hills. The views were magnificent, but I should have kept my eye on the path, because it gave way beneath my feet, plunging me into Stygian darkness. That's not what she said. Oh! That's going to leave a mark. So, uh... I will say, the model's a little wonky, but you know what? That's fine, because it's all created characters, and they're actually talking. So, I'm, I'm fine with wonky. That That's perfectly fine. That's understandable. Lighting and light sources. In Salasi, you will explore deep, dark places without natural light sources. It makes exploration and combat harder, especially for characters without dark vision. Well, luckily, she is a elf, which means she has dark vision. Uh, you can equip torches or cast light spells to reveal your environment for your whole group. You can hold flammable items like torches or holders by interacting them while holding a torch or by casting a flaming spell on them like the cantrip Firebolt. So I've got a torch. Light the two torches, huh? Ah, I see. So let's swap back to this and try casting Firebolt on that. Yeah! A 
upon my word, this is an orc hideout. The Malador is unmistakable. I wonder how these setups are done. Like, are they... Are these done per background? Because what happens if you make four characters with the same background? Are these done per class? Again, what happens if you make the same character with four class? Same class. Like, it, obviously these things are all kind of set up to introduce the characters and introduce, like, the very mechanics as a tutorial section. But I'm like, how, how are they actually budgeted out? Does every single character have a... This is the escape the dungeon interact one. This is the combat one. This is the uh, healing slash exploration one. This is the stealth sneak one. Like, do each of them have a different... Are they all going to have the same thing no matter what? Or... I'm just, I'm just really curious how this runs on, like, a different group with, let's say, a non-standard team. Let's see, if your character can class healing spells, like Cleric for instance, press the cast spell button to select a spell in order to recover less HP. You can also use a potion found in nearby loot. Yeah. Heal yourself. Ooh, a chest. We've got another potion. A torch. Some arrows. And rations. Always good. There they are. Discretion is clearly the better part of valor in this instance. Ah. Oh, wait a second. Wasn't this... Cautious mode. Activating cautious mode makes you slower, but it grants two benefits. Hidden objects and traps are easier to find, and you're harder for enemies to spot. When an enemy starts to notice your presence, a gauge appears above their head, giving you time to react and return to hiding. Remain three cells above the enemy in this mode, and you can't be detected. Okay, so how do I... Cautious, I see. Yeah, but they can also do it with the, uh, they can also do it with the torch. Just move normally, I suppose. Oh, hold up. Oh no, I put that chest up already. Look at all this. What's here? We have some moss. Hell yeah. Ah, I have to go down, I see. No other means of egress is apparent. Fine. I shall wait until they go. These creatures do hunt, right? Take a long rest. To recover hit points, special abilities, and spells, you must take a long rest. To do so, you need to gather your party around a safe place and have one ration of food per party member. Safe places are represented by a campfire. They are also shown on the location map. Many spellcasters know more time than no more spells they can recall at a given time. Prepared spells represent those a character can use by spending spell slots. Check your hero's list of known spells and choose which ones you want to prepare. Spells that are not prepared cannot be cast. Many characters know more spells than they can prepare, so choose carefully for the given situation. So how do I do that? Ritual? 
Ritual, Detect Magic. Okay, wait, so how do I... Probably figure this out before I do this. How do I prepare spells? Okay, it looks like if I go to character, I can hit prepare spells. Character. Crafting, high elf spells, wizard spells. Hmm. I have two slots. Wait. Oh, that's right. No, wizards in 5e have um, flex casting. That's right. Oh, after a long rest. Oh. Oh, okay. So I can prepare spells right now. Which means I get Featherfall, Shield, Magic Missile, Mage Armor, and Burning Hands. I get... I get... Oops. Yeah, so... These are at will. Could take this one off and prepare a Detect Magic as a quick spell, but I have that as a ritual, so why bother? So yeah, I can cast... Look at these spells. I'm missing a spell component for that and this. I don't have my component pouches. Hmm. Okay. Let's get over here. Oh, I can sneak through there. That works. Yeah, that's a good way of doing it, though. I like that it automatically gives you the option after doing a rest to say, okay, what spells did you want to prepare? You slept with a bunch of orcs. Huh. That explains the smell. Thanks, Bjorn. Orcs have a very distinctive stink. I'm beginning to think Lord Karen might be a mythical creature. We've all told a tale of our travels here. All but one of us. Yes, but I have a good reason for that. It's none of your bloody business. Come on now. Don't be a killjoy. We all sang for our supper. Now it's your turn. Fine. Oh. You want to know the truth? I stopped on the way here to visit an old friend of mine and discovered he was up to his eyeballs in debt with a lone shark. Oh, that's not good. Indeed. He put up a family heirloom as collateral and wanted me to reacquire it because, you see, I can be quite stealthy when necessary. Well, he is a halfling. They are basically just thieves as a race. Use cautious mode to move stealthily. Enemies can hear you if you if they cross your noise circle, and they will spot you as soon as you leave the cautious mode. Your noise circle depends on your armor type and your stealth skill. Also, it's a good idea to avoid moving into an enemy's field of view while carrying a light source. Remain in cautious mode for the whole duration of this mission. You must make a stealth check if you attempt an object interaction while within hearing range of an enemy, such as opening a door, chest, or even pickpocketing, and you will remain undetected only if you succeed. Cautious mode also allows you to find and follow tracks. Aha! Oh, look at look at that. Oh, let's get this real quick. Using the camera, right click and drag to rotate the camera. I did this already. Thieves tools. Take those. Liam, always thoughtful. Is somebody close enough to spot me? Oh, this guy. I didn't even notice. <laughs> Cover the stolen gem, huh?
Lock picking. To try picking a lock, mouse over a locked door chest and left click. If you select your whole party, the most skilled character is automatically chosen for the task. You must have thieves tools in your inventory to try picking a lock. Being proficient with thieves tools will help. Well, conveniently I have two. Yeah, 15. I'm supposed to go with this. I guess over this way. Look at me, I'm so fucking stealthy. Violet. It's from the angry bush. This is a very angry bush, you see. Ah, this is probably it. Wait, a trap. Oh, good thing you're a rogue then, huh? To disarm a trap, you must first detect it. If you try to open a lock, open or lockpick a chest with a trap that you haven't detected, you only find out about the trap when you trigger it. To try disarming a trap, mouse over it and left click. You'll need to make a successful dexterity check. Thieves tools will help if you're proficient with them. Some traps can only be disarmed by triggering them. If you fail to disarm a trap, you may trigger it or lock it or simply need to try again. Nice. Ah, there's the trap. Too easy. Liam's heirloom and some gold. Ah, damn it! There's people there now. There you are, you filthy crook! You? What? You're drunk. Get out of here before I kill you. Think you scare me? Not anymore. A grave mistake. Liam, what are you doing here? I told you I'd take care of it. Sometimes in the course of your adventure, not some non-player characters may become critical. This means if you let them die, the game is over. If you attack an enemy while undetected, you gain advantage of surprise. That means you have advantage on your roll to hit and your opponent cannot react before the next turn. If you're a rogue, your attack will... Be a sneak attack, dealing additional damage. Well, conveniently, I am a rogue. Nice. Are you four here to see Lord Karen? Who's asking? Depends on who's asking. Well, if you're here for Lord Karen of the Legacy Council, that would be me. So you're real then? So you're not a mythical creature after all. Unlike, say, a sober adventurer? Oh, oh, Can you tell oh, us more oh. about the job? Well, I suppose it's better if you know what you're doing. What do you want to know? Uh, are you our employer? Are we going to work for you? Not exactly, no. I'll be your contact with the Legacy Council, which you will serve as deputies. That's why we need to go there and get you sworn in. About the Principality. What can you tell us about this place, the Principality? 
We don't exactly have the time. Anyway, the Principality of Mazgarth is ruled by Princess Kaiwood Silverflower. We are a wealthy state with fertile lands and the easiest access to the Badlands through a pass called the Copperhead Road. We're in the capital, Kaer Kiflun, which was once part of the ancient Manicalan Empire of the High Elves. Hence the magnificent elvish buildings up there in the High Town. While we don't have a state religion, all of the major faiths of Celasta are represented here, though we tend to favor Einar, the god of valor and fidelity. About the Legacy Council. We hear this is a mission for the Council, but what is it exactly? Dear Moraike, you don't know? I'll try to make it simple, but you know, politics? The Council includes representatives of the most powerful and influential organizations in the Eastern Kingdoms. It was created to lead a joint effort to explore the Badlands. I do like how... <laughs> I do like how he's going, we don't have time for this, but here's the exposition. What are the Badlands, really? Simply put, they are a monster-ridden, chaotic wasteland that used to be the elven empire called Manicalo. It was destroyed about a thousand years ago by the Great Cataclysm. Now, only ruins remain, full of forgotten knowledge, riches, and dangers. What are the organizations you mentioned? The Council is, uh, how to put it, a non-governmental organization, meaning that state governments are not represented to avoid partisanship. Instead, there are delegates from the Guild of Antiquarians, the Tower of Knowledge, the Arcaneum, and the Circle of Denantar. And the Church of Einar guarantees fairness, led by Marshal Beric Sunblaze and Oathkeeper Lyra Keen. Lore! Which countries make up these eastern kingdoms? Simple. The Principality of Mazgarth, here, is in the middle. The Snow Alliance lies to the north, the Kingdom of Galavan to the east, and the New Empire to the south. All friendly, more or less, but the peace is fragile. Okay, we're good. I think we know enough now. Thank you. <laughs> we should go, don't you think? Very well. Come, gather your things. You're late for your swearing. I didn't realize in. that was a sub Hurry dialogue menu. Wait. The story of my life. It's really funny that was a sub menu that popped up. Principality's capital is a large city. Right now, you'll need to find the Legacy Council. Once you've been there, you'll have to access the fast travel function, but for now, you'll have to walk a little. Go north and walk up the stairs to Sunblaze Court. Take the stairs west, then take the stairs west to the council. So north to Sunblaze Court. Stairs west. This place is magnificent. Ah, this is it. I'm busy. Come back later. Okay, thanks. So it's not really north, it's like northwest. Nice garden. I never thought I'd get so close to the embassies. Look at the size of this council hall. Nice, so isn't this it? This is what they spend our taxes on. Look. Is that the princess? Wait. Is she leaving? Apparently so. Then who will administer the oath? 
The maid who empties the chamber pot? The maid who empties a chamber pot? No, we're not as important as that. Perhaps a stable boy. You thought it would be the princess? If not her, then who? If she rules the whole principality, who's more important? Lady Keen, the council's oath keeper, is trusted by all. Lord Caron. Yes, my lady. Are these your new deputies? They are, my lady. My name is Lyra Keen, oath keeper of the council. Shh. Quiet, everyone. And I will be administering your vows. Once sworn in, you will carry the authority of the council wherever you go. Your every action will reflect upon the council's reputation. Remember that, always. Now, please, raise your right hands. Do you, each and all, solemnly swear your lives and allegiance to this council and promise to carry forth our mission to protect our alliance from any who would threaten the common good. I, I swear. swear. You're kinda... Excellent. Lord Caron will enter your name into the council's register. Thank you for your service. Congratulations, deputies. Wait, that's it? Yeah, I like, you can see it. she's kind of floating off the ground over there. Also, I like how we're going do, 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 do. That was long enough. Frankly, the speech was long enough for my taste. The formality reflects the solemnity of your oath, but more would probably be immodest. So, the mission. As I'm sure you know, the Council maintains a number of outposts to secure the border between the Principality and the Marches. One of them is the former Imperial Fortress, KLM. It's held by some 50 troops under the command of Captain Henrik. He sends us weekly status reports, or rather, he used to. We haven't heard a word from him in three weeks. Leave immediately for KLM and find out if anyone there is still alive. If Captain Henrik or anyone else is still breathing, bring him back. The council wants a first-hand report. Uh, where's Captain... who's Captain Henrik? What can you tell us about this Captain Henrik? A fine officer. More than 15 years in the Principality's army. He inspires trust, loyalty, and courage. Hence, the decision to post him there, facing danger. Interesting. Uh, we spoke of the marshes? Wait. These marshes... They're not in the Badlands, are they? The marshes are a no-man's land, between the civilized world and the Badlands. It's outside the chain of mountains that really define the Badlands. We wouldn't send you in there... yet. Sounds dangerous. A whole garrison gone? There are only four of us. Just find out what happened. Run back if you get scared. Got it. Though we were hoping for a first mission with more riches than risk. <laughs> if you catch my drift. You don't get to choose your mission, I'm afraid. So, gather what you need and go. Time is of the essence. Alright. Right. I guess that's that. It's on to KLM. Oh, wait, what? Wait, hold, what was that? Faction relations. Look at look at that. And the five faction count the five council factions have representatives in care cliff care the care. They can sell you equipment, spells, and many other things. The better your relationship with a faction, the more they have to offer and the lower their prices. However, these factions are in competition with each other, which means you can't please them all. Various subquests will give you opportunities to improve your relationship with one faction or another. Keep an eye on the faction section of the journal. Press the map button to open the location map. When a waypoint has been found, you can use it to fast travel to another place in the location. For now, you can fast travel to return to the Gravekeeper's cask. Oh, look at that. Ooh, oh, hey, it's a whole thing. Cool. Very cool. Hey, look at this. Look at this whole thing. It looks like I got level up. Take a long rest to start the level up sequence. And while I'm there... Uh, quest log. Let's see, council. Level up. Oh! Oh! Head back to the Gravekeeper's cast. Speak to Carol, the owner. He'll tell you how to get to room. And you can see here, I have sympathy from the Principality of Masgarth, and everyone else is indifferent about me. Principality Masgarth will join you in battle. I guess that means 
if there are NPCs around which are aligned with Mazgarth, they'll hop into the fight with me. Hey, let's talk to Ko real quick. Uh, go get killed in the Badlands. Okay, yeah, I can kind of hear it. I can kind of hear it now that I'm in... Okay, how do I select the entire party? That's that button. But I can kind of hear it now that I listen to it. You were still filling your diapers when I killed my first ghoul. Yeah, I can, I can definitely hear Ko now that I know that it's him. Hello, adventurers. Hi. What can I offer you? A room. We'd like to stay for the night. Sure. Just walk up to the suite and settle in. A suite? Uh, it's more like a large bedroom, really. But you know, this is the capital city. All right. Level up time. Yeah, baby! Bjorn is now a level two fighter. Gained 10 hit points and an additional hit die. Action surge. Regain a main action immediately. Take a short or long rest to recover this. And that's it. All right, uh, prepare spells. Spells repaired. Uh, while you're here, level up, actually. Let's do this first. Gain one additional hit die, six hit points, grants you specialization with a certain kind of magic. I get a new first level spell slot. Two spells to select. Additional re class features. Arcane recovery. Once per day, when you complete a short rest, you can recover a number of expended spell lots up to half your wizard level. So I can get one spell back. Classes provide a specialization when reaching a certain level in the form of class archetypes. Archetypes have different names depending on their class. Arcane Tradition for Wizards, Martial Archetypes for Fighters, Cleric Selected, Divine Domain, and Level 1. Each archetype offers a set of features and abilities which grant a unique flavor to the character and can radically change its playstyle. So Green Mages. Green Mages are heirs to the ancient traditions of the Sylvan Elves. They are wardens of the forest, specialized in nature magic, and also reliable bowmen, trained to survive without spells if need be, as they had to in the wake of the Cataclysm. Lore Masters are obsessed with the lost knowledge of pre-Cataclysm times. They know the Old Empire had superior magic, and they long to learn more about the lost spells and rituals. Their magic is focused on gathering all possible knowledge. Shock Arcanists were the battle mages of the Man... Manicolan Empire. Their teachings have survived the Cataclysm to become a renowned and feared magical tradition taught in every major magic school. So, Green Mage. Uh, spells from the Green Mage list are considered wizard spells for you. Animal friendship, disease, so druid stuff, basically. Are druids not in? Because I... Yeah, I didn't see druid. Uh, let's see, uh, Contagion, Instant Plague, Trade to Basic Enemy Mission, Natural Explorer. You benefit from the same advantages as Rangers when in a forest environment. I also get Entangling Shot. Your arrow can transform into a vine on impact. Target must make a strength saving throw or be restrained until the end of your next turn. That's cool. Leaf Scales. When an attacker that you can see hits you with a ranged attacker spell, you can use your reaction to have the attack's damage against you. Very cool. Lore Master. Uh, advantage on Arcana, History, and Investigation Ability Checks. Advantage to copy scrolls to your spellbook. Scroll and potion crafting costs and times are halved. Spell Academic. You learn one additional spell each time you gain a level. In Arcane Lore, you can add proficiency bonus to the number of spells you can memorize. She does have 16 decks. Uh, Shock Arcanist. When casting spells from the war list, they count as being cast at one slot level higher than the one you actually use. Oh, is heightening spells just a thing you can do? So this basically looks like uh, evocation spells can be cast at a higher slot level. Oh, no, they count as being cast at a higher spell level. Arcane Fury, add your proficiency bonus and int mod bonus to your evocation spell damage for one minute. Recharges after a long rest. Arcane Shock, uh, you overcharge your mana and become restrained until the end of your turn. However, when you cast an attack spell, your damage dice always above average. In return, you'd make a con saving throw DZ 14 
and take 2d6 psychic damage if you fail. I think I'm actually going to go for green mage because two reasons. First, as a caster, wizard, she's not going to always have spells. And having spells for utility purposes, probably more useful than having spells for evocation when I have a fighter and a rogue on the team. Second, because Entangling Shot actually looks super strong. I have 18 hit, so... Oh, it's a... I, have, I can use it four times because my int is 18. Uh, tough choice, tough choice. I'll go with Green Mage. I'll keep the... God, it's really hard to pick. Try to go for Green Mage? So I get, I get Druid stuff, and I also get to use bows. Lore Master, which just means I get spells for days, and also I can craft scrolls and make spells for days. Or... Shock Arcanist, which is Battle Mage. I'm thinking Green Mage or Lore Master. You know what? Let's go for Lore Master. Scroll and potion crafting costs and times are halved, so that way I can actually just make scrolls of everything instead. Okay, tutorial. Spells and magic. Some classes have access to magic spells right away, while others have to reach a higher level or select a subclass. This screen lets you choose which spells the character will be able to cast. Cantrips. Some classes and ancestries have access to cantrips. The character must select the allotted cantrips from the list provided. Cantrips are simple spells which can be cast infinitely without spending a spell lot as opposed to main spells. Each provides a list of spells tailored to the class flavor. For example, clerics have healing spells while wizards can harness the power of the elements. Some classes can access all the spells from there, while others, like the wizard, must collect them in their spellbook. And finally, some classes require you to select and prepare their spells through a long rest, while others are free to use their known spells provided they have remaining spell slots, like Sorcerer. Which also isn't in this game, come to think of it. Okay, I can't pick a cantrip. I have one... One first level spell I can get. Seems like Grease. Grease would probably be a very good one to get. Expeditious Retreat is handy, False Life, Charm Person, Color Spray, but Grease though... Oh, I get two. Let's get Grease. Uh, Fog Cloud is handy for defensive purposes. Identify is also useful. How long does this thing last? One hour? Sorcerer is upcoming. Okay, so they're still adding stuff? Very cool. Let's go with Comprehend Languages. Let's prepare your spells too. I get not more spells I can prepare. Uh, shield, increase your AC by five just before you take a hit. How long does this last for? Zero rounds. So it just adds a, th oh, it's a reaction. Oh. Featherfall is there too, but I don't have the component pouch. Burning Hands is always handy for evocation. Grease. Detect magic. Mage armor. Provide magical armor to an ally who doesn't wear armor for eight hours. Pretty good. Alright, so let's level up the rogue here. Anton. Cunning action. You can take a bonus action on each of your turns in combat. This action can be used only to take the dash, disengage, or hide action. So the one time I played 5e, I did play a rogue, and I remember this, because I was able to move and also attack, like move very far and also attack with this. So I remember how this one works. At higher levels, I get roguish archetype, so that's not very important at the moment. Level up Tanya. Spell slots, one first level. Channel Divinity. 
Turn undead and preserve life. Uh, I think... I want to say... I want to say Cleric still... Clerics still keep the... Oh, they have... They have Cure Wounds as Domain Spell. Yeah, so they, they have prepared automatically. Uh, Guiding Bolt, Detect Magic, Detect Evil and Good. Detect versus Evil and Good. Shield of Faith. Healing Word. Inflict Wounds. So I don't have Detect Magic prepared. Yeah! So. I heard your stories. Not impressive. <laughs> wow, rude. Alright, so buy some food for the journey. We gotta buy four. Hello, adventurers. What can I offer you? Your beer is terrible, and that's being polite about it. What? What? I've never had any complaints about the beer before. Maybe your palate is not refined enough. <laughs> we should go. All right, where am I going to buy food from? I guess a different store outside, right? Oh, I'm still inside. That's why. Oh, hey, seamless. All right, what's this? Unknown party stash. It's yours to use. Captain Marin stash. What? What's all this? Who are you? I'll be with you in a minute. Clearly you haven't. Hugo Wrecker. What's uh, what's up with you? Crafting. In Solasta, you can craft various items. To do so, you need the proper equipment, ingredient, skill, time for magical items. Sometimes you need to know spells. Crafting is performed while traveling, once your party has set up camp but is not yet sleeping. Characters can devote some of their free time to working on the current crafting task. Tools required for crafting. For potions, you need an herbalism kit. For scrolls, you need a scroll kit. Poisons, you need a poisoner's kit. Enchanted weapons and armor, you need a manacle and rosary. Even if you're proficient with a given crafting tool, you'll still need specific skills to make successive checks against the recipe's DC. To craft potions, sometimes medicine is enough, but arcane arcana is very useful. To craft poisons, medicine or nature is useful. Craft scrolls or enchanted items, Arcana is a must. Crafting requires ingredients. They can be found while venturing and gathered from flowers, bushes, and rocks, and sometimes from dead creatures. Obviously, you can also buy them from shops unless they're very rare. Enchanting requires primed items that have been magically prepared for enchanting by Manacol and Master Smiths, whose secrets were lost with the Cataclysm. Generally, a primed item will require a very rare additional ingredient to fulfill its potential. Finally, to craft an item, you need to know which ingredients to combine. These recipes can be learned by reading manuals or taught by masters. So lost in factions generally keep copies of recipes and sell them at good prices to their friends, but some can be found out there in the Badlands too. Once a recipe has been learned, all the party can use it. To start crafting, open a character's screen and click on the crafting tab. Simply select a recipe that is available to start. The progress bar will fill as you travel and you'll be notified when the operation is over so you can launch another one if you want. Remember that if you cancel crafting operation, the ingredients are lost. Hello, how may I help you? What do you sell? What do you sell here? Mostly potions for heroic adventurers like yourselves. I also have recipes for customers who like to craft their own. And ingredients, too. Even rare flowers from the Badlands. Come back any time. I'm almost always open. Oh, I see your wares. Okay, so what do you sell, huh? Do you have... You got your spell book there. I should get you a smith toolkit. That's not what I need. I should get you a diamond, diamond, emerald, pearl. I should get you a scroll kit. How many uses does this thing have? 
How much gold do I have? 71, huh? Oh. Oh. So I need to buy this, the recipe too. Mmm. Okay. Clear that for now. I'll come back to you later. That is too much money for me right now. Welcome to Gorim's Emporium. Are you Gorim? That's me, the one and only. Okay, uh, so I got my food. Hey, nice. Welcome to Gorim's Emporium. What do you sell? What do you have to sell? Everything you'll need for going out there into the Badlands. Food, ropes, torches, and of course, armor and weapons. I also have some other stock like remedies and antitoxins. That can come in handy. Ever heard of deep spiders? Bye. We should go. Everyone does have a torch, right? I mean, like, you the only one who can't see in the dark is her. Uh. Yeah, it's a really good touch. And plus, your party members actually interact with stuff. It's not just you going, your character is not the Deputies. only one who talks. A word, if you please. So famous already. I love it. You were in there too. Are you a member of the council? I'm Annie Bagmorda, quartermaster of the Scavengers Guild. We don't have a seat in there, but they all know exploring the Badlands without us would be a bad idea. That's why you should stop by our headquarters downtown. You'll need our services, I'm sure. Is that compulsory? No. But you'll find our services useful. Everyone does. Did Lord Caron not tell you? No. He pretty much stuck to giving orders. Oh, right. Anyway, we offer plenty of help and advice to beginners like you. We are grown-ups, you know. At least most of us are. Of course you are. Well, good luck. At least, yeah, of course, of course you're grown-up, shorty. They're tough, these scavengers. Fearless. Inviting beggars to the council? How peculiar. I'd rather visit the temple, honestly. So, what do you think? Should we check out their headquarters? It's not far, but I've had enough talking. Let's go kill some monsters. If there's business to be done, we can't afford not to. Yeah, I, I know I can light her weapon. Actually, does she even have that? Like, who has it? A quick shopping. Near merchant, you'll find a quick shopping interaction. This bypasses the discussion to instantly open the merchant interface. Oh, so that's what that is. Let's see if I cast spell. Yeah, she's got light. Light is with us. Ta da! Now she's a torch! Okay, where are we going? Ah, her! That's what that was about. Ah, you came. You picked our curiosity. So, what exactly do you have to offer? You don't know. You gonna tell me or what? Do you sell healing potions? No, we don't. There's a shop for that. What help do you offer then? What kind of help do you have to offer to people like us? Simple. Now, people like you typically carry out missions for the Council. In the marches, even in the Badlands. Sometimes far away, like Captain Merrin. 
Who's Captain Merrin? You really must be new. She's one of yours. Senior Deputy of the Council. Anyway, you trek out to some old ruin in the Badlands, kill a bunch of orcs. Well, you're still a bit green, so let's say goblins. Ouch! You're hurting our feelings. Orcs will hurt much more than your feelings, believe me. <laughs> and stop interrupting, it's rude. So let's say you find yourself with a whole load of rusty swords, leather armor, shields too much for you to log back here. Oh, so we're puny as well as green. Thanks so much. So instead, you brave heroes just clear the place of monsters and draw us a nice clean map. Then we take our carts and pick up every piece of junk. We bring it back, we sell it, and we split the profits with you. We move the stuff, you go off to kill more bad things, everybody wins. For a percentage, of course. What? You could never carry it all anyway. Not in your little backpacks. Thank God they exist. Holy shit, thank God they exist. <laughs> This is, this is the best thing they could have added to this kind of game. Seriously. Like, I'm, I'm playing Pathfinder, I'm like, oh yeah, great, I've got... 50 shields just hanging out that I can't pick up because they're worthless and I want to sell them, but I can't take them because they weigh so much. But imagine if I could have just hired the scavenger guild to go in and just clean up for me, just take care of a problem, take care of everything for me. That would be lovely. Well, thank you. I guess that's it for us. Fine. Feel free to visit us any time. Or drop into any scavenger camp. Are there others? Anywhere we can settle. By the way, if you find Captain Henrik, tell him we're still interested. In what? In getting our people to care Lem. The outpost is perfect for us. Close to the Badlands with plenty of space for our camp. Right, we'll tell him if we find him. And he's not dead. That would be appreciated. The more you do for us, the more we do for you. Oh, so this uh, business relationship can get better? And I hope it will, friend. I guess we'll see you around then. Sure. Good luck out there. And don't forget, in the Badlands, always keep your eyes open. I mean, if you want to give me a little a little tip, that would be appreciated, especially if it's something that'll help me in the long run. What do we got in these chests, though? We got unfinished biography. Handwritten biography, apparently used to draft a biography. Progress seems to have been canceled after just a few lines. God, I feel that. Dragon's Den advertisement. Folded paper that looks like an advertisement. I'll just, uh, I'll take all that. Party stash. This chest is yours to use. No one can loot it. You can stash up to 50 items inside it. Many adventurers use this scavenger service to store some of their stuff. Hey, handy. Okay. What? DC... Oh, DC 22? Well, I can't get in there anymore. Rip. <laughs> Captain Marin stash. Oh, I see. All right, so where do we go now? Hmm? It's an angry bush over there. Who's Hedl Headlon Sure Spell? Who are you? All right. Anyway, uh, we are headed this away now. Ah, exit to the town. I see. You must gather your party before adventuring forth. Anyway, yeah. If you got if you got some tips to drop in, feel free. Ooh, what is this? Use the arrow keys to explore the map. Click and on destination to plan your travel. Your party will take some time to get there. While en route, adventurers can gather food by foraging or hunting. They can also find crafting ingredients and encounter travelers, remarkable locations, or even monsters. 
A slow pace lets you move cautiously, trying to remain hidden from monsters. A normal pace is faster, but riskier. A fast pace is the quickest of all, but can be dangerous. Rangers will be very useful while on the preferred terrain. You will find more food and are less likely to be surprised by monsters. You can set up travel so you don't need to micromanage your party. Whenever someone can level up, a long rest can be started immediately without finishing the day's travel. When a crafting task is complete, you can set up a new one without losing time. You can open the post-rest window after a long rest, for instance, to modify your prepared spells. So how do I do that? Aha! Oh, look at this! Let's see, uh, recipes learned by one is known by all. The 4x4 grid is based on your matching or marching order on the right-hand side. Oh, uh, okay. Select portrait and move up or down to change location on the grid. Okay, cool. Let's see, uh, interrupt when the long rest has been completed. Interrupt when a character can level up. Interrupt when an item has been crafted. Cast the Goodberry spell when the long rest starts. Create food or... Hmm, do I not have create food? Well, let's travel at a fast pace here. Two days, one long rest. Travel routine. Oh, there's actually going to be a little travel journal. Oh, that's super... Oh, I like this. This is super cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, I did see the thing where recipes learned by one is known by all, but it's just I, the recipe plus the crafting kit was a lot, so I, I I'll I'll buy it next time I stop there. I won't. I just don't want to have to risk running out of gold when I need to buy something before I finish this first quest. Your heroes normally plan their travel so that they're always fit and ready for anything. This routine requires them to travel no more than eight hours a day and leaves enough time to eat, sleep, and for other activities such as crafting, talking, playing games, playing an instrument, and praying. Sometimes the normal routine will be interrupted and your heroes will need to travel while they should be resting. This will add fatigue and may lead to exhaustion. Adventurers know how to push themselves temporarily and return to their normal routine, limiting camping activities to get more rest so that the fatigue is reduced. No food. It's like, ah, ooh, okay. And so this this is interesting though, because like, while I'm doing this idle stuff, like just to contrast it with uh, Pathfinder, right? The uh, movement is basically just: Are you going to run into one of the scripted events, like the merchant, the um? quest encounters, like the drow, the, uh, the question, the quiz guys, that sort of thing. Or, or combats. Like, that's basically the only thing you encounter on the road. In this one, it's like, it's a lot of passive stuff, and the passive stuff is like, plays a game of dice with a wandering scholar, or performs armor maintenance, Anton sings an old song. Uh, com the combat encounter is combat, obviously you gotta do combat, but like, a lot of the other stuff is sort of rolled into it, so you just have a list of things that happened to you as you're traveling, as opposed to having to interact directly with it. Keeps it nice and slimline. I, I like that, actually. Like, they, it's, it's different design direction, right? It's different direction. The Pathfinder one wanted to be like, you're always interacting with it, you're always very much in it. This one is, get from one place to the other, the intermediate stuff isn't as important as the two endpoints. I've been surprised! You've been surprised while camping. You must fight off your attackers before you can leave. Having been surprised, you cannot take any action during the first turn of the battle. Don't hold back your spells and powers. You will finish your long rest after the battle, so put all your strength into this fight for survival. This, uh, ready in action. This lets your character wait for a specific condition to be met so they can perform, interrupt... They can then interrupt other characters' turns to perform the readied action. In Crown of the Magister, you can ready an attack depending on your character and their equipment and abilities. You can move, use a bonus action, and still use ready in action. This automatically ends your turn. Uh, you can use shortcuts to switch your equipment. Your three weapon configuration shortcuts by default. The last shortcut is your light shortcut. It uses the third configuration that includes a torch or other light source. If you have the light cantrip in your spell list, the light button will cast it immediately. 
Uh, you can change your weapon shortcuts in your inventory. Drag and drop weapon, shield, or other item into a hand slot to change the shortcut. They're coming for me! Anton surprised. Really, I camped out next to a watchtower? Highwaymen. <laughs> Round two, fight. Ooh, very cool. Like, I I'm just glad that... So, like, there's... The stuff where, like, they have slots for the other campaigns, and I guess you can make your own. There's the dungeon creation. Like, as long as they keep adding more tools to use, this will just live forever. Because you can make whole bunches of stuff with it. Which is super cool. So let's, uh, let's magic missile. Ah, I can select three targets. And ahoy! Get wrecked. I'm gonna stand here where there's cover. Nice. And action surge! He up! Dead. Attack another target if I can move. You have them now. Bend is attacking Anton. You can react to impose disadvantage to the enemy. Oh, damn it, he still got me. Let's target Anton with this. Ah, you missed, idiot. Ooh, that's bad. Well, that wasn't good. Burning hands. Oh my, look at this cone effect. That's so good. Ah, look at this. So it's the cone and it actually shows you the, uh, the dice cone. Nice. That's so good. Ah! After a night attack, you can safely go back to sleep and complete your long rest. To do so, simply click on the campfire. All your characters will see the benefits of the long rest as normal. A cleric of the Oblivion Domain with peaceful rest will not be surprised in future. This time was for the purpose of explaining the rule. Oh!
So let's, uh, I assume they'll heal up later, but like... There we go. Everyone go sleep. Actually, let's uh, swap this around. There we go. God, there's such there's a lot of really good detail in this. I really love it. Party's on the move, did not find any food, huh? Interrupting travel. You can always interrupt your travel manually by pressing the interrupt button. Then you can click on a character's portrait to open their inventory and possibly start a new crafting activity, change equipment, or any check anything you like. <laughs> Hold on, let, let me see. So Bjorn, okay, so party not finding food. Bjorn manages to collect crafting ingredient Angry Violet, works on a martial arts training exercise, starts looking for access to the location. Neala cooks a nice meal for the party. Bjorn starts a heated political discussion about the principality of Masgarth. Oh god, I forgot to loot! Ah, That was stupid of me. Okay, it's fine. We're... It's it's fine, probably. I, yeah, I totally forgot about loot. Uh, well, this uh, picture tells me that the place is probably perfectly fine. So, that's Kerlem. We're almost there. It's just up the hill. Oh yeah, that's it's true. a little too quiet, don't you think? Yeah, it seems like it, doesn't it? Oh, there's a thing over here. So a ballista just hanging out. What's that smell? It's blood. And goblins. Take cover. In battle, you often find walls, barricades, or other setting elements that display a shield icon. Half cover gives enemies a minus two penalty to hit with ranged attacks. Of course, you have to be on the other side of the cover. Three quarters grants a five penalty. Full cover means you cannot be targeted. This does not affect melee attacks or area of effect spells. In battle, you can only use your inventory once per turn. This includes switching weapons. You also have a utility slot that allows you to access and use an item without spending your inventory action. Place a potion or scroll here to be able to use it directly. This will still count as your main action. Uh, you can change the difficulty settings of the game on the fly. Just open up the menu, change the settings, and return to play. The changes are applied. You can pick a difficulty preset or browse the detailed options for a more customized experience. Alright. Where's the enemy? Oh, they're moving. It's moving over there, okay. Get it to cover! Uh, I'll just... I'll enter. Cast a firebolt at you. Can't can't hit it too far yet. Out of sight, huh? Really? It's out of sight up there? Alright, well, I will should be able to cast a spell on this one over here. It's a bit far, but we'll see. Oh damn, okay. Wizard! Hmm, there's another one over here, I see. Hmm, didn't quite want to do that. Oh! Ow! 
Jeez, rude. Got we'll more of them up there now. No free hand, huh? Nice. Surrender or die. Ah, healing word. Very nice. That worked out well. Uh, he does have a bow. A bunch of goblins around. There's one over there, one over there. None of them are in sight. I'm cunning action to dash over to here, maybe. No, I can't. So I guess I can hide behind my cleric. Oh, I got one. That's a good hit. Not sure who that was aiming at. All right. You're going to dash up. Action surge. Attack. This one. Bravo. Nice. Victory is yours. And in turn. Cast a spell. Where can I hit this? Hit that one up there. That one up there. No. I oh, he's not dead? Damn it. I must. I rolled low on that one. Okay, I don't see any other enemies, so probably safest to actually stand up here. Oh no! I didn't think he was gonna come down! Keep him coming! Nice! And turn. And, uh, you know, let's switch back to my daggers and just stab Aroni. Really? You missed? Are you fucking serious, bro? Oh, bad luck. Are you f people for real? Jeez, what was with that? Short rests are a useful way to recover while exploring a dungeon. You can do so whenever you're far away from all possible enemies, though this may be impossible in a very hostile location. The party must all be together. A short rest is a period of downtime of one hour in which characters do nothing more strenuous than eating, drinking, reading, and tending to wounds. After a short rest, characters can spend hit dice to recover hit points. Heroes have one hit die per level. Once they're spent, they need a long rest to get them back. You can spend all or part of your hit dice 
after a short rest. Other abilities may be recovered by taking a short rest according to a character's class and level. Where did those goblins come from? Some hole in the mountain, I guess. Ooh, yes, give me those. A scimitar. Hmm. It's a 1d6. I don't think those are worth grabbing. Is that something worth getting? Nope. How about this? Yes. Let's grab this one real quick. Ooh, very nice. I wish it was easier to see where something was that was being looted. Oh, hey, look. There's, there's some uh, some stuff getting fired up over there. It's, it's fine. Take a short rest. I'm at full HP, so I don't need to do any of that. I don't even have any spell slots expended, so whatever. There's a chest, though. Brimstone Viper Gland Venom. A rapier. Yeah, you know, why not? Look at this! Oh, that suit! That looks really good! It's like a good combination of, like, traditional map sort of setup and, like, this 3D model of the map. I really like that! I have a bad feeling about this. No shit. There's no one here. Not even corpses. Look! That tower! That's insane! What? Courtesy of the Cataclysm. The marches are full of stuff like this. The Badlands are worse. Anyway, we have a mission. Let's check the fortifications. I see this chest. One thing I do wish I could do was uh, when I press Alt, I can't move or rotate the camera unless I use my mouse. I wish I could use the keys, but I don't know why why it doesn't let you do that. Yeah, it, it really is. Hide armor? Yeah, why not? Like, just the... Th there's a lot of really good design in this game. Like, just excellent design. For real. Like, a really good... It's, this is, like, probably... Like, I, as, as much as I like the other CRPGs, this is probably the best representation of video game to tabletop game... Con or tabletop to video game conversion I've seen for D&D &D or similar games. Like, everything else does it... Remind your keys... Oh, I can rebind. That's true. Ha! Oh, I can use this to climb up. Ah, it's so good. Nice little warm up. Ooh, a diamond. Got some arrows. 
and a shield for somebody. I don't really know who's going to use that. I got a shield on the one guy who uses one. Or two people, actually, come to think of. Both of them use shields. Okay, where am I? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Like, there. Yeah, there, there's a lot of really good design in this game. It's... It's really fantastic. Ugh. There's definitely been fighting here. Why did we take this job again? Oh yeah, these lovely council badges. This is no time for jokes. Right. Whoever did this could still be around, and we don't want them hearing us. We should look for survivors. Fifty people can't just vanish. Speak of did the you devil. See that? Someone's hiding inside the tower. It's a trap. The goblins killed everyone. And now it's our turn. Or they're the survivors, and they're being cautious. We need to get up to that door. If they slaughtered the garrison, they'll pay. Back off! No closer! Who's there? We're not letting you in! And we're not coming out. Is Captain Henrik there? We need to talk to him. Don't you dare speak his name, you filthy bastard. Don't talk to them. They'll cast a spell on you. Don't touch me. The fuck? Lost their minds. The lot of them. Let's get to the door. Maybe if they can see us up close, we can show them our council badges. <laughs> No path to destination, huh? Oh, oh, ah, right. I see a trap. Ooh, a trap. Ah. Battle with who? Unknown creatures! Well now, okay. What are these? They're bugs, it looks like. Let's kill this one since it hasn't acted yet. Another victory. Nice. There's a lot of him, okay. Victory oh, there close. it goes, through the floor. That's actually really I really like that little bit of detail. Shake it off. Ow. Poison damage, huh? Green dragons. Those aren't green dragons. Take that. Nah, I don't think this is worth an action surge. Nice. It's a healing word. Ah, eh, no, she's only got. She's only taking two HP. She's fine. You never stood a chance. And the other. Are you fucking serious? Get back here, you coward! Oh, 
There we go. Brimstone Viper. What do these things give me? Oh, the glands I was picking up. That's right, I did see one of those on the goblins, huh? And now I have a quick way back up here. Handy. Look at him go. What is this? What is this? What's this? I believe this was called a minor imperial gate. Fast travel! At its height, the Maniclon Empire had countless gates like this to magically travel through the Empire. Yeah! I don't suppose it still works. Some say there are still functioning gates. And this plaque? Any value? Maybe. The Tower of Knowledge? Why not? Wait, was this the Tippyverse? So, uh, the Tippyverse, let me, if I remember correctly, what the Tippyverse is, is a universe in which, a ba basically a theoretical universe, or theoretical setting, in which, ca in which wizards have taken over, because why wouldn't they? They are incredibly magically powerful, they can cast spells, which take them across the world and allow them to bend reality, so why wouldn't they be able to, like, put together an entire whole network. One of the things in the Tippyverse that I remember was like, why don't a bunch of wizards just go around to all the major cities and put down uh, <gasps> teleportation circles everywhere? So you can just teleport from one city to another instantaneously. Like, <laughs> teleportation circles require no continued no continued input of any kind. You just make it, it set it where it goes, and you're done. Like, why, why don't wizards just do that? And I guess they, there you go, they did. And then there was a magical cataclysm which ruined their entire civilization, introduced gods and also humans, thereby ruining the place, so that's probably why you don't. See, the free camera usually follows the ground elevation. When navigation zones overlap, you can move the camera up and down using the mouse wheel or the arrow buttons on the compass. I guess those? Uh, the compass arrows appear in these situations. Oh, if there's a serious height difference, an icon is displayed on screen. Wait, I'm seeing a trap. Good, because I'm not. Oh, of course. Can I get this? No? Okay. <coughs> They're here. You damn Sorax. Sorax? Did they say Sorax? Oh, they spotted it. <laughs> We're shapeshifters from another world. Guess we'll have to go home now. You bastards took the captain, but you won't take us. Don't talk to them. Ooh. Spy call phrase, sell sword experience, be reasonable, cause she made the she made the role. We're council deputies. We're deputies of the council, sent by protector Lyra Keen. And failed. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm Princess Kaiwad. Get lost. Open the damn door. There are only four of them. No! I said no! <laughs> Well, I still managed to get through, so hey. Thank you for letting us in. Don't thank me. Look at these fucking losers. So you really believe you were attacked by Sorax? Men-sized lizards who speak? Oh yeah. They're real. But we found no corpses. Nothing. We know. They took all the bodies. Ours and theirs. Her so no one can prove they exist. 
Her face is like weirdly high detail compared to the rest of them. Like just look at look at her face and then compare it to the other three. You realize, of course, how improbable that sounds. You won't laugh when they come back. We got here without trouble. Then they let you in. And now you're trapped with us. Why would they do that? How should I know? They're Sorax. Like, look at her face. Are you in charge here? Lieutenant Beryl Stonebeard. Second in command. After Captain Henrik. We'd like to talk to everyone here, if that's all right. As long as you don't try anything clever. We're good. There's Beryl Stonebeard, neutral creature. Challenge, easy. Anything up here? No. Oh, there's a thing here. Loot it. Move these arrows together. I got some bolts. Scale mail. AC 16, no dex, minimum strength 13. 14, dex bonus max 2. Hmm, worse. Plus 2 to AC, plus 2 to AC. Longbow. Someone can use that. Oh god, he was right twice in a row. So, who are you, friend? Daliat Sunbird Scout. Do you believe they were Sorax? Dunno. It seemed real, though. What do you think they wanted? To kill us all. Huh. Not big on talk, eh? I'm having a pretty bad day, so if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna rest now. What? Okay, what Is was Is it the... me, or didn't he like that last question? God, what was it? Uh... In... Yeah, so in this, it's... He's the conspiracy nut about the Sorax, and in... Cyberpunk, he was the conspiracy theorist about the... What was it? Was it lizard people again? Was it lizard people? or what? It was, He was a conspiracy theorist about, like, vampires who were going to implant people, which turned out to be him somehow accidentally tapping into signals from... What was it? It was, a uh, Maelstrom? He was tapping into signals from Maelstrom people and also just like listening into their communications. Now it's my turn, right? What do you mean? What is this? A murder investigation? Should we be investigating? Maybe. Speak up then. Well. Let's say this all happened after a certain expedition. Spit it out. The scouts. They came back from a raid Look, into the badlands, found a ruin, came back with loot. The next day, this happens. Coincidence? You tell me. Only one of them's still alive. Daliat. Oh. Hi there. Hi. Name's Robar Sharp. Oh, so you're the old sweat of the group, huh? Yeah. But I'm not in charge, mind you. What do you think of Daliat? Never liked him. He's hiding something. He's been nervous since we came back from the Badlands. But it'd be no good picking a fight with him now. I understand. This Lieutenant Stonebeard. 
Is she up to the job? Clearly not. Look around. Losing the captain broke her. How about Lisbeth? You're her superior? Good woman. Strong, brave. You can trust her with a sword. That's worth something in my book. So what do you think we should do? For starters, not wait in here for the Sorax to come back and off us. But Stonebeard says stay, and she's an officer, so... Yeah, she's a stubborn one. And mutiny's a bad look on a soldier. You could talk to her. Deputy of the Council and all. So if we find a way, you're with us? I'm with myself. But don't let that stop you. Uh, I want the chest. Right. We need to make a decision here. We have enough to make our report to the Council. So let's get going. If we don't help them, they'll either die or kill each other. This place is a death trap. We should get out while we can. So, everyone has an opinion, but what are we gonna do? And what about Daliat? We got some pretty worrying hints about him. What if he really is hiding something important? Yeah, it, it was a little disappointing that, like, his storyline was basically just a tune into this crazy guy ranting every so often, and then he vanishes and you go kill a bunch of monsoon people. You know what? I'm with Bjorn on this one. Bjorn Tall, Tall Barrel, you've got it! We need to talk to him. Find out the truth. And before I do that... I'm not entirely happy about how she seems to be standing with her weapons out. First, let's go talk to this guy, then over here. Take care of this chest. Nice. You got some hide armor. You are carrying nothing. A scroll of tongues. You can kick this. Poison damage. Huh. Unidentified. Uh, okay, so let's do this. You cast spell. Magic detected. So what do we detect magic on? It's magical. Hmm. This is obviously magical. Potions magical scroll of revivify. I'm a little over encumbered here. Okay, nothing else seems to be magic. I could probably drop the shield. And the scale mail. That's a lot of weight right there. Imperial gate plaque. Oh, are they right on the ground? Yeah, it looks like they are. It's kind of hard to see, but they're right there on the ground. All right. Hello. Deputies. Hello. Never mind. We'll come back later. We want you to take the lead. Hi. What does that mean? No, nope, nothing to say there. No, you know, let's talk about Dalliot. Let's talk to Dalliot here. We need to talk. <sighs> Do we? Yes. About this trip to the Badlands. That's what we do here. The Sorax attacked after you came back. So what? 
I brought them here? Did you bring something back? We always do. Like the scavengers. Ask Sharp. He has tons of things brought back from there. But maybe this time you took something special. <laughs> it's nothing of value to Sorax. How would you know? Hey! Trust us. We're all on the same side here. Damn, come on! No. Show us, or we'll help ourselves. Are you <laughs> I don't Why? Think so. Why are we... Why was I constantly rolling bad for just that? That's so garbage. Ah! Wow, he's got... Oh, that actually did no damage. Okay, never mind. And up. Good. Isn't there... Oh no, I'm thinking Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate 3 had the uh, non-lethal button. Are you serious? You've got some explaining to do. Daliat was hiding this from you. That's probably why they attacked. He refused to let it go, despite the danger. I'm not surprised. That's it? So when it's your turn to be killed, I should just say that? Lizbeth! What? <laughs> wow, okay. So Sorak Infiltrator. What was that thing before as well? I saw something there about silent... Silent Whisper Parchment. Okay. Let's get down here. And attack. Wow, that did nothing. Sick. Get over there, Bjorn! Nice! Ow! What? Where did he... Shadow escape. Oh, he's over there. Fucking serious, you bro. Suck. Thank you. Nice, got a little bit of damage. And Come on, really? I 
attack him. Nice. You die, not the rest. Elizabeth. I'm sorry. I should have stay with us, brother. We're not the enemy. Sorax. Right. Who's crazy now? We must alert the council. We need to get out of here. That's what we need. Look at that skin. It's unbelievable. What even is that? He came from here. Look. What's this? A secret passage? From Imperial times. That was just a scout. More will be coming. They're here. They're coming back. Outside. Oh, wow. We need to go. Take your stuff into the secret passage before it's too late. Critical characters. Two characters join your party as companions. Take care of them. They are critical and will be game over if they die. On the other hand, they're not mere followers. They can fight and perform actions just like your heroes. Uh... Okay, this... Hold on, I'm gonna check something here. Is... Game... Keyboard... Is F5... Quick save! Cool, excellent. I just wanted to double check that F5 is quick save. And F9 is quick load. It's a little lengthy load, but hey, it works. All right, so it's pretty dark in here. Look at that. I'm too used to pressing backspace to be able to select all my party members. Dive in the dirt now. <laughs> move, 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 move. We're all gonna die. Oh, don't be such a put a wuss. This one didn't die yesterday. What's this outfit? Tim Marion. Who wants to open this? You never know, there might be a fortune in there. We're opening it. Ah, oh. uh, it's this. Of course. Uh, I'm just blind. Never mind. Uh, it's fine. So we have money. Tamarian Inquisitor's journal. Scroll of Dimension Door. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, mm. Magnificent leather armor. What's your current armor? You know what? There you go. You get better armor now. Fancy. Uh huh. What's this? Wait. Think that's Sorax? Who else? Right out of a fairy tale. As ugly as life. And certainly not lizard folk. We can surprise them. Can't we sneak around? From what I see, not a chance. All right. Tread lightly. And we all attack at once. Surprise attack. If you sneak up close to enemies who are unaware of your presence, you can take them by surprise and force them to lose their first turn of a battle. To do so, click on an attack option or attack spell with one of your characters, target an enemy, and confirm the attack. This will start the battle and give you the advantage of surprise. Also, as long as your characters remain unseen, they also have advantage on attack rolls. Before we do that, though, how do I...
Huh. We bring light in darkness. How do I deactivate your light spell? There, I put it on there instead. Now it's not lit. So she'll hang out here. Uh, let's see, you, where are you? Cautious. Can I get you over to here? Destination, huh? Damn. If only. If only. If only. Okay, let's let me go here real quick and I'll quick save before I do this, because I want to see. Maybe if I drop this stalagmite on that one. Because this will drop it on this guy right here. Because I really want to drop the stalagmite on that. I wonder, really want to drop the block on that one, but I'm not sure how to get there. get in this Can I even target this? No, it looks like I can't. Hmm. Probably needs to be something very explosive. Like would you be able to hit it with a firebolt, for example? How do I move these things around? Aha! That's how. Okay, it looks like that is stealthy, actually. So if I just do that, I should be able to take them all out. Let's do this. Ooh, this is such a cool section. This is such... Like, this is something I wish you could do. Like, the... The, uh... Tower of Estrad, I think, is probably the closest thing to this that was in Pathfinder. But this one's like... Yeah, this is... This is the real shit. This is that good shit. Go. <laughs> Generate? 
A generation? Huh. Oh, well, that... <laughs> well, so much for that. Oh my god, there's a lot of them. That's a lot of them. Okay, never mind. That's a very large number. But also, regen? Regen at this level? Okay, what else we got? Um, hmm. I have you cautious. <laughs> Maybe I can have him jump over to here. Maybe he has the skills. He does have athletics, and he is very strong. He totally can. Oh my god, okay. Okay, so we have... Hmm. Alright, uh, these two can hang out here for a minute. Actually, these two should probably... Come down here, too. Here we go. Let's try this. Okay, so you push this. You push this. And, uh... You cast Firebolt at this, because why not? And you get down here, I guess. Uh Perhaps if you tried to be loud instead? She's currently in stealth. Here, so she's in cover and turn. Hmm. Got cover on that side, so let's just go with this one. And a miss. Sick. That's on me. Damn it. Nice. Nice, nice. I thought I was surprising them. I didn't think they'd be able to attack even. Are you fucking serious? You're still standing. Are you for real? Are you fucking for real? Dealing no damage. Or at least she's not dying, even though you did very little to actually help, which is annoying. Have you 
fucking serious. What is this? What are these rolls? At least that one hit. Are you fucking... Nice, big damage. Always appreciated. Let's get back up here. Didn't think you could do it. And might as well attack. Cunning action. Should have spent my cunning action to dash. Oh well. At least they're also rolling like shit to hit. Oh, come on. Oh my god, he's almost dead. Fucking, are you fucking serious? Ah, another miss. Yeah, right? I know what you mean. Okay, miss, that's good. word. Wow. Keep rolling that min heals. Big help. Thanks. At least it's that guy's hitting. There, it's dead. Oh. Fuck. Jeez, okay. Just where it hurts. Nice. Crit. There's one over there I'm going to have to start shooting too, I guess. Disadvantage. Fucking seriously. Oh, is it because it's dark? At least that's a miss. That one is hanging out on a wall or something. I don't know what to make of that. Well, I did some damage to it, so that's something. I thought halflings had dark vision. Again. 
Nice. Yeah. Nice. Finally. Okay, that's Next not time. great. I'm gonna just cast this right here. Solve this problem. Yeah, it was the darkness. Oh, shit! Yeah, you like that, you bitch? Nice. There's nothing here to... Oh, there's a torch thing right there. Okay. Sacred flame. Perfect! Yeah! Get back behind that wall if you would. Okay, Rovar, you are also... I'm going to also have you get you behind this wall since you are in bad health. Oh, I could use light. No, wait. Light's a touch strain spell, isn't it? Yeah, it's a touch range spell, so I can't light him up. But I can't light him up. Yeah! Hmm. Tactics! Okay, now let's take a nice long rest right here, because fuck. Okay, hold on. Let me let's go grab these items real quick here. Good arms you got. A candle. A little teeny light source. What strength? Ooh, a scroll of revivify. Two rations. I think it's a good time to take a nap, though. We're in a bad place. Actually, I could just do a short rest, couldn't I? Uh, you can use a... Yeah, let's do a start short rest. Alright, so give me one of those. You want one of those at least. Use one of those. Good. Hmm. Yep. Got some trap. Uh, I failed, but it's fine. It didn't hit me with the trap. Why can I not pick this up? Oh, it stacks up to five. I see. Oh, can you not? Oh, yeah. The other two are... No, they're, they're pretty good health. She's not in the best health, but he's okay. I think I could push on a little further, though. I've got quick saves just in case. I can always come back here, right? Huh, what's this? <laughs> what is this? Yeah. <laughs> 
Hello. Can anyone read that? It's old Timarian. It looks like a part of an Inquisitor's outfit. So that's from the tower up there? She did, yeah. Maybe we're inside the tower. Is that gold? This is history. History all around us. Take it and let's move. The Sorax don't care about history, I'm sure. That's true, yeah. She did have some spells. A uh, couple heals. Which... Yeah, I'll, I'll just move a little bit forward. If it looks like something I can't handle, then I'll go back and rest. Shit food, shit shoes, business I'll have to tell you. the captain's wife. Rotating bridge, huh? Well, uh, looks like I will take that, since I probably won't be coming back this way. Long rest time. It's 2 a.m. Alright, prepare spells. Any spells? Seems fine. Why? Because I'm doing poorly or because I'm doing well? I forgot I had grease. <laughs> I actually did forget I had grease. Okay, uh, let's move some stuff over real quick. Uh, I don't think you need this. I don't think you're going to need this rapier. Or this longbow. I'm not entirely sure why I have so many candles. But they might be useful. Who knows? Oh, they're slightly used torches. So I can't just... Oh... Uh, we've got some antitoxin, projectile parts. I could probably give you something. Silent Whisper Parchment. Old parchment written in some kind of elvish cipher. Uh, here, take, take a couple torches. All right, let's rock. With the whole party, not just one person. You can't sell the torches, good to know. Also, thanks for the compliment. Sorax can't be far away. Uh, we should be cautious uh, from now on. Track spotted, huh? Oh, look at that! You can actually see the track. <clears throat> How do I get over to there, huh? <clears throat> Looks like it's almost a jumping puzzle to get through here. I'd be surprised if there's people who are playing this that aren't really enjoying it, because this is a great game. <clears throat> like, legit, this game's fantastic. Hmm, how do I... Can I get over there? Can I leap this? Does that work? Wow! Okay, you can. <clears throat> Failed, but I still did it. Oil of acuteness, a dart, and another candle. Everyone can join me. While we're at it, what's this about? 
Oh, it's probably just to get up here. I see. It's it's a good thing that I have a dwarf who is so uh, athletic. A sapphire and a primed short sword. You say? Absolutely, take that. Aravad's kiss, poisoned arrow. Well, I think that's going to go on my rogue, because I'm pretty sure he can use poison. And if he can't, well, fuck. Actually, you can probably just take off that. It's not You're not hiding from anything at the moment. What? Wait, what? There, what? God damn it, I didn't... Fuck! Uh... Well? Uh, that's unfortunate. Well, let's get down here, I suppose. Uh, everyone else is still hidden. He is the only one that got spotted because I wasn't stealth, because I didn't think there were enemies around. <laughs> oh, God. That's really funny, actually. you into position down here as well, so you're just hidden. There we go. Critical characters are now out of sight. Honestly, really funny. I think he is the only person who's been spotted by these things. <laughs> oh man, everyone's going for him. Everyone, everyone is going for him. Damn it. Oh, he got spotted. They're all hidden. Aha. Just have her hide out over here and start casting light so I can hit things. Oh, because they can't see in darkness either, I bet. That's why. There's a lot of them, though. Oh, boy, there's a lot of them. Is he on the walls? I think he's on the walls. He's totally on the walls. Look at that. Okay, uh, this is a little this is a little awkward to do, so let's get over here. No, 
Nice. Action surge up. Smack him again. Come and on. fucking miss. Great. I could dash to get over here and, like, get ready to take him by surprise, sort of. Let's do that. Sacred flame. Let's light some torches. Okay, I can't see it from there. Trying to get there, but I'm slightly so. If I move over a bit, I think actually, if I move right here, I might be in line to use Sacred Flame to hit. No, still no. Maybe over here. Perfect. Not, did I not hit the thing? I thought I did. It's really hard to tell. Ah, damn it. It knocked me down. At least it didn't push me off. Use my cunning action to dash over to here and what's your strength what what actually is your strength Anton uh, 12 you know what? let's try it maybe I'll get lucky yeah That's bad. Nice. All right, so that thing's lit now. Missed. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Are you okay? Cure wounds, inflict wounds, guiding bolt. Go, that one's lit up, so now they can see each other down there. Phew. He's running. I want to shove, push away. Did you hold the three? <laughs> 
can't even get there to assist. He's in a bad spot, really. so I can't even target them. Man, I really fucked up by not stealthing there. Bless. Can't bless anybody. Damn it, got spotted. Miss, that's good. disengage to move myself out of the way, but that still doesn't leave Bjorn in a good place. I could disengage... Man, this is just a bad situation for me in general. Totally hemmed in. He's just absolutely, absolutely fucking surrounded right now. And he missed. Nice. Great. And she's prone. Cool. God, this is just a terrible fucking location to fight. Like... Everything's behind cover or so far away that I came and see him. Can I? No, that's up top. That's not going to help. What is this? Uh, shadow armor. Keep lighting up that section. Ow! Okay, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. At this point, this is like. This is a complete clusterfuck that I cannot even deal with because the enemies are just all over the place and even blocking my movement. Like, I have nothing I can do at that point. That that was just terrible on my part. Okay, so let's try this again. Failed again. I don't know what the failure actually does. Like, what does is, what is failing that actually do for me? Or do to me, I should say.
All right, gotta move this thing. Grab that container. Head back to the rest of the group. Very good. So now get back over here. Excellent. So now you can give this to Anton. Let's swap that out for now. Oh, those are darts. That's not the one I wanted. I wanted to give this to Anton. Poisoned arrows. Uh, let's see what else you have. You can give I can a candle to her, Tanya. Yeah, here, just keep giving candles to Tanya. She could probably use them for something. Get the scroll of... There. Oil of Acuteness. Uh, fused with a primed weapon or suit of armor in order to enchant it. Okay. So what do I do here? Well, knowing what I know now... <coughs> Yeah, there they are up there. I see them. I wonder. Let me let me check this. Can I cast the spell and start lighting them up from here without being? Yes. Yes, I can. So I can actually light them up without giving away my own position, and this is perfectly safe. This works for me. Can you... Can you move up here? Hmm. Some more torches over there. I'll just grab that one too. Good, good. This is a little bit better, I want to say. Because now I'm not dealing with this nonsense. How do I delay again? Can I delay? I guess I can't. Mm, disadvantage behind cover. Let's just attack this one then. Nice. Good damage. She gets to cast a spell. Woohoo! Hmm. There's no. No, that's gonna drop down here. That's not gonna help me in the least. Uh, can I light them up somehow? Oh, there's a guy up here. Ooh, 
Ooh, okay. good damage. Perhaps. Good damage. Okay, I'd like... Coming action. A dash. Get over to here. That works. Better than nothing. Guiding bolts make him easier to hit. Well struck. Ooh, very nice. And some good damage on that too. Enemy turns. Ow. Rude. Jeez, okay. Seriously? Seriously. Se seriously. Failed to push me. Okay, I got lucky there. Disadvantage on this one, because it's behind a wall, it looks like. Or something, I'm not entirely sure, actually. Oh, it's in darkness, that's all it was. And I hit it, but did minimal damage. Sick. Word of healing on Anton. Rise! Shock and grasp! And crit miss! God damn it. And AOO, that was a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. Nice. Good damage, good damage, good damage. Take an AOO. Let's block it, actually. Good. And a crit miss. Perfect. Is there a lantern or something around here? Bless. One, two, and three. Ah, uh, can't cast that. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Eh, well, I'm gonna have to get out of here at some point, I suppose, huh? Might as well move here. 
More caution next time. Oh, well, not really I could do. Not really much I could do about that. <laughs> oh, thank God. That would have hit. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's a big one. He's got two health right now. Can I cast... Hey, that was nice. Mine. Switch back to this. Cast Healing Word on Nialia. That's a nice heal. Zap. Not bad, eh? Not a lot. Rolled a very big hit, though, but still not a lot of damage. Ha! Nice. Ooh, perfect. perfect. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. And to turn. Seriously? Uh, rolled a one. That's not good. Uh, God damn it, again? Again! Uh, <sighs> okay, so let's take care of this monster while I'm at it. Action surge up and just attack it again. And miss! Great. Crit miss. Thank you very much. Alright, cast a spell. Healing word. Anton. Bad, not bad. Anton's back. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice move. Yes, nice move indeed. That just leaves two. Fucking seriously? Well, he's not dead, so that's a good thing. Where's this other other one that... Oh, it's over here. Right, that one. Fucking really? Thanks, man. Big help. Okay, good. That one's dead now. So now you can hang out behind here. Cast Firebolt on that thing to keep it out of darkness. Very good. Nice. And then you can retreat to... Let's uh, dash and get you into cover over here so you're safe. Guiding bolt, go. Again. Yeah. Fuck. Is there anything even worth grabbing off of these things? 
Corrosive bolts. That's probably worth something. I do appreciate how everyone is like... Decent? At using ranged weapons? So I had the problem in Pathfinder this, where... I might just drink myself to death. Oh, the bless ran out. The problem in Pathfinder is, uh... My characters are not optimized for that? Which makes you doing so a little bit of a trouble sometimes. Hey. I really don't feel like he had to jump over twice. What do we got here? Unidentified potion. Magnesium. I guess I should probably get Identify going next. Oh, that reminds me. You're out of spells for today. Ritual, that was it. Ten minutes. Ta-da! Magic detected. Hmm. Curious. Oh, it's probably because he's over... What on earth is weighing so much in your inventory anyway? Like, what is taking up all this? Here, you can give this to you. Is it this thing? It's the rations. It was the rations. The rations were causing him to be weighed down. Still can't make that jump, though, huh? Fair enough. Let's try something real quick here. Just see if I can... Nope. Okay. Onwards. Yeah, I, I noticed that after... It's also like, it weighs a lot. Like, that is some very heavy food. Aha, there's the exit. What's over here? Is it some magic mushrooms? It appears to be, in fact, magic mushrooms. Alas, there is no way for me to reach it. Unless I want to use that scroll of Dim Door, which seems like a huge waste. We're safe. We still have to go back to Kerr Kiflin. The road isn't far. I suppose we'll meet again in Kerr Kiflin. Are you good to return by yourselves? Aye. Of course. Hey, look at that empty space where another character could have been. Except I killed them. I killed all of them. Including the women. And the scout. Uh, it doesn't seem like it. I was trying to target it with the firebolt spell, but it wasn't hitting it. Or wasn't able to target it. Alright, on to Kerr Kiflin. Let's get out of here. Wandering Scholar. Ooh, I found an apple tree. Bjorn cleans their shoes. I didn't find the guy, though, did I? I didn't even find his body. I do like how they immediately go from like, oh yeah, look, there's goblins here, ha ha ha, goblins in the beginning army, to 
Secret lizard men race? Secret deep lizard man race or something? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I could start him. Hooray! Let's get over here. Are you guys not? Why couldn't I? Whatever. Let's go talk to Annie! Hello, Annie. You're back. How did it go? Well, Captain Henrik is dead. I'm sorry. Oh. Well, who's in charge then? You might have to wait before going to Carolem, I'm afraid. I see. Well, not your fault. Thanks for the heads up. You're welcome. Yep, thank you, Annie. Now give me my money. Yeah, but I, I'm not finding a lot of stuff in the wilderness is the problem. Clear skies, my friends. Well, thank you. I guess that's it for us. Only one person needs Stay to pay in for the rations. Light, my friends. Yeah, well, uh, like, like I said, I, I got lucky to find those four. I didn't... Nor most of the time, I don't find rations. Or anything, really. Okay, let's put some stuff away in here. Uh, this sword can go in here. This can go in here. This sapphire can probably also go in here, as well as... I could probably put some rations in there, honestly. Like, I got a lot of rations. Mm, yeah, there we go. That'll do. Uh, what have we also got? We've got an unidentified potion. I'll have to identify that. Uh, these things weigh two pounds total. I'll have to find where my junk vendor is. Kind of think, but I don't need any of these torches. <laughs> I need zero torches for this character. This one has light, so I don't need torches for her. Uh, he's the only one who might need torches. She also has dark vision, so she doesn't need torches. Oh, this is magic! Oh, I didn't even realize. Well, okay then. Let's put some flowers in there. Some storm hither, a diamond. All right, that looks good. All right, uh, let's go talk to my contact, huh? Lord Karan. Oh, here you are. Yeah, hi. How was the mission? Not paid enough. Who is? When can we hope for an audience? It depends. Tomorrow, if you're lucky. Another party came back yesterday. And they still have to make their report. So maybe they'll see you both at once. Listen, we can't wait around here. What we've got is big. The outpost at Kerlem has been attacked. Almost all of the garrison was killed. By all the gods! Meet me in the council chamber. I'll inform my superiors. Sounds like a plan, man. Oh, hi. The Legacy Council is now in session. Full Captain Meron has the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, your royal highness, my party and I have made a very worrying discovery in the Badlands, near the place we call Black Hill. We saw a group that we took to be scavengers. They attacked us right away, but we were able to fight them off. They were trying to get away with this. What is it? This box contains a gem. A ruby, it appears. We have determined that it has magical properties, and we believe the Council should examine it. So we will, Captain. But really, is that all? You called an emergency meeting of the Council for a simple magical gem? Her Royal Highness has a busy schedule. Please, Lord Denantar. In this chamber, I'm just a student of magic. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. Anyway, Captain. The Council has a great deal of business. They were Sorax, our attackers. Not scavengers, not bandits. Sorax. Hmm. 
Sorax? Is this a joke? The Sora Akath are no laughing matter, Lord Fasek. Oh, you know what I mean. What do you mean, my lord? How many times has the council heard tales of these so-called Sorax? At least twenty, I'd say. More. Twenty-three. Yes, more each year. It's becoming a fad. Our church has been warning of the Sor Akath since humans first came to Celasta. In the wake of their foul god, Sortar. I'm sorry, Captain, but you are certain that you encountered Sorax? It's true, they're real. What? And who might you be? Some new recruits, my lord. They were sworn in quite recently. New recruits, eh? They place too much stock in rumor, it seems. They assure me that they saw Sorax as well. Wait, do you realize how serious this is? They attacked Kerlem. They attacked the Kerlem outpost. The garrison suffered severe losses. Kerlem? The outpost in the marches? What do you mean by heavy losses? The Sorax took over Captain Henrik, and only two of them are still alive. They can testify too. Do you have any material proof of their existence? I beg your pardon? Like what? Well, a dead body, for example? Or even just a head? If we go to Care Lem, will we find the bodies of these Sorax? Probably not. They took their dead with them when they retreated. The bodies of their victims, too. Hmm, how very convenient. You're an asshole. So I want to kill offer you. offer us no proof of this adventurer's fable. And what if proof were to be brought before the council? What proof? How? If the Sorax take away their fallen, as they say, that's not our problem. Let them find a way. These are new recruits, correct? Then let this be their new mission. Bring us the head of a Sorak for the whole council to see. That would certainly be proof, Lord Fasek, would it not? Oh, very well. Meanwhile, the council will examine the gem. Uh, if there is nothing else... Dean Ayalar Fasek of the Tower of Knowledge calls for a recess. Does any member object? No? It is resolved, then. The Legacy Council is now in recess. What an asshole. Also, I can sell the torches to get them out of my inventory. But you won't get money for it. That actually went better than I expected. Well, that's something, at least. We had to stand by Meryn. We know she speaks the truth. I'm sure she will appreciate your support anyway. Some people might want to talk to you after this. Working for the Council, you are expected to be neutral. But? But you have the right to have friends. So, feel free to talk to whoever you like, as long as your allegiance remains to the Council as a whole. All right, then. <laughs> I like how he just says, okay, look. You can hey, see deputies. Thanks for the support in there. You're welcome, Captain. So those bastards got Henrik. Shame. You knew him? Yes, indeed. I wonder who'll volunteer to retake KLM now. The scavengers could lead the way. Yes, they'll find a bunch of hotheads to retake the fort, I'm sure. Stay in the light, friends. You too. Hooray! Oh, I've got a lot of stuff to do now. Ho, oh, oh, ho, whoa, okay, hope. Oh. Calm down there. <laughs> Alright, well, let's go talk to her over here. Or him? Can't tell. Oh, it's Beryl! Well, if it isn't our brave saviors. Salutations, Lieutenant. I'm no longer Lieutenant. I resigned my commission. I work for my people now. The Snow Alliance? I will never step foot in the Badlands again. Yes. Well, you clearly weren't cut out for that posting. I've made my peace. But you aren't here to check on my welfare, are you? No, we seek information. Before the attack, where exactly did your scout venture? You mean, Daliat? Right, Daliat. Where did he go before the Sorax attacked? As far as I know, there's not a name for this place or road that leads there. But I can show you on a map. It's near the ruins of an ancient tower. You have our gratitude, Lady Stonebeard. What are you thanking me for? Sending you to your death? <laughs> yes, she's got a point. 
All right, what else we got here? We have the new Empire Embassy. We have... Uh, is this the edge of the map? It looks like it. Can't be, right? No, it's got to be something here. Yeah, there we go. What's this? That's a beautiful... Oh. Oh, it's a Kickstarter backer thing. Okay, cool. To our eternal heroes, I'm not going to even bother trying to read all of these names because there is a lot of them. Hold on, I think I just saw a name on there. No? Okay. Alright. I wish I had backed this. <laughs> I probably didn't even hear about this game. I mean, I didn't hear about this game. I probably wouldn't even known about it. It may have been during that period when I was burnt out on Kickstarter because of a couple Kickstarters that went horribly wrong. Sun on your face, travelers. Thanks. Balance and harmony, chaplain. Fair weather, faithful one. We need your services. We do require your services. What do you do? You sell antitoxins, potions, scrolls, a uh, holy symbol. Okay, doesn't seem like you have anything that I need at least. All right, uh, what else we got? Can I go through this door over here perhaps? Seems like that is a no. No over here. Nothing over here. Nothing over here. Uh, nothing really in the Sunblaze Court area. Oh, I could go up here, though. No path to destination. No path to destination. What's that about? Ah, oh, that's what that's about. Okay, so nothing up there, really. That seems to be blocked off. Yeah, okay. What's up, dude? Look who it is. I see you survived the council. We did indeed. Oh, looking for Sorax, are we? Possibly. You people are crazy. This time, we'll take them by surprise. Right. Good luck with that. Farewell, Roba. Well, that was it. That was it. Okay. Good to know. Let's see. Let's head over this way. I want to explore this town a little bit. See what's around. City guards, what's up with this area? Stay in the light, citizens. Anar guide you, deputies. And by stay in the light, do you mean stay out in the light of the city and not the dark void that exists beyond this wall? Maybe that's what they mean by stay in the light. As I stay in the light, I push back the darkness. Who are you? Maddie Green Isle. Clear skies, citizens. Okay. Clearly, you are unimportant. Or rather, you will become important much later. Lane ends. Huh. Why would I even bother coming here? Can I get in this area? Probably not. I can't get... I can't get in here. Okay. Just a bit wonky on the clicking.
One thing I will say is that the uh, the movement is a little wonky in this, because it's... It's like trying to get the exact location you're getting to, and if it doesn't do that, it just leaves and stops. Whereas in Pathfinder, if you click, it tries to approximate to like the closest reasonable spot, so... I guess it's probably because it's trying to conform to the grid. Like the invisible grid on the map. Uh, it's 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 a little awkward. Hello, Annie. We wanted to talk about Carolyn. I'm all ears. No one's there anymore. Ah, you want to claim the place. How does it work again? We go there and scavenge everything you didn't take. Then you get a percentage. We can't promise you it's safe. <laughs> it never is. Once we get there, we'll set up an outpost of our own. I'll check with the council first, but thanks anyway. What do we do next? Once we've done our work, I'll let you know. You'll just have to come by and collect your share. Six days remaining, okay. Cool. So I can actually like mosey on over there. When you have cleared a location of monsters, go to any scavenger outpost to report your deeds. They will send their people there to collect the minor loot left and sell it. Each time you visit a scavenger HQ, you can claim the money they owe you. They take a portion of the total value of what they brought back. You also have the chance to buy back some of the collected stuff beforehand. You don't have to talk to the scavenger quartermaster to use the system. You can click on the sign nearby. Oh, okay. I like that. That is such a useful system. Okay, um, sell those torches, you can keep your torches. I'm not a big fan of how I have to do this. I can sell these candles too. Yeah, it's kind of annoying how I had to actually select people individually to do this. Uh. Ooh, a component pouch. I could use one of those. I do have a lot of gold. I could also use this to buy a scroll kit. Don't sell that, huh? Alright, well, this'll work. Nope, don't do that. Alright, so you bought those, so you move those over to you. Uh, is this the scroll kit? Yes. You take the scroll kit, you are proficient. Are you proficient with these? Ah, okay. Are you proficient with the Smith's kit? Because I don't need two on him. No. How about you? You're a dwarf. <laughs> he is proficient with it. Okay. Um. So you have the scroll kit. Excellent. Hey, we got to focus. Click the lure on the map to get somewhere fast. Yeah, I know. I was just trying to zip around, try and find if there's anything interesting. Okay, now here's what... So here's the main question. How do I scribe? Can't. Too high level. Got it. I'll hold on to that for now. Revivify. I don't think I can use that one. Tongues. Also can't use that one. So these are higher level spells that I just cannot use for the moment. I gotta get Identify on her too. Alright, so next up... What do we have? Venturing gear. Crafting. I want to get... One of these. Okay, so I got enough for this. Q. 
Cure Wounds, Thunder Wave. Too much for most of these. Belt Component Pouch. That? Yeah, you know, you know, it's fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay, so take this, move it over to her. Or rather, she doesn't need to do that. Just read. Now we know how to make a scroll of magic missile. I need magnesium, angry violets, and galavan amaranth. Which conveniently, I have galavan amaranth on somebody. Right there, galavan amaranth. Angry violet. And I think I have magnesium right here. So I can make a scroll of magic missile. Hey! I like how it's a recipe, although I'm not the biggest fan of how it's actually like ingredients. Like let me, let me check here. How much how much does it cost to buy the stuff for this scroll, right? I got all these ones for free, so how much does it normally cost? Uh let's see. I want Magnesium is 12. Amaranth is 12, and Angry Violet is... Well, so it costs 36 to make a scroll of Magic Missile. Not bad. Actually, that's not bad. I also then would have to go and collect the varying spell recipes in order to learn how to craft them. So, you know, it's it's fine. Alright. Um, Headland's Sure Spell. How you doing, Co? I know everyone in this city, and everyone knows me. Yeah, whatever you say, bud. Let's talk to this fellow. I want to know what his deal is. Hedlon Schuspel. Clear skies, adventurers. Okay, your deal is you have no deal. Got it. Okay, so I need to kill possible Sorak base. I need to kill about four days or six days. So let's go a nice slow pace. Interrupt. Let's go here. I'm going to have you use your crafting kit. No, nope, not that one. I want you to use the scroll kit. Ah, it's down here. Ooh, got food rations. Apprentice Necromancer. Well, so much for being safe, huh? Battle start! Oh, I'm surprised, right. Where's the necromancer at? Dark Apprentice, a dangerous but not fully learned necromancer. Probably a student of a more experienced master residing nearby. Ow. Ooh, Acid Arrow, really? That's spicy meatball. Ah. Nice job there. There we go. Well struck. Yeah. All right, weak to bludgeoning, baby. And heal Bjorn. Behind a wall, huh? Can 
I hit him at this angle? Where is... Oh, there he is. No. Alright, well, in that case, I'll just... Boop. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Nice. More coming your way. And might as well action surge it up. And move this way. Ow. Chilled. Cannot gain hit points. If undead, disadvantage on attacking the caster. There we go. Can't heal him. Can I get him from around this corner, maybe? Sure can. Nice. You ain't running, bitch. want to go for Bjorn so bad. Holy shit. Can I delay? I guess I could, yes. There we go. tried to hit me while I was moving. Okay, whatever, buddy. And he... <laughs> Fucking crit miss. Of course. Oh. Jesus Christ, are you serious? There we go. All right, get Bjorn up, please. Hey, I got some rations and a dagger. Oh, while well, I'm at it. Do do do. Anything magic around? Nope, nothing magic. Oh, hey, look at this. We've got level ups for everyone except Bjorn because he died. God damn it. <laughs> uh, got some rusty scimitars. Oh, boy. Oh, no, Bjorn got a level up too. Never mind. It's kind of hidden on his head there. His forehead blends into the arrow. Yeah! All right, let's level up. Level three fighter, 10 more hit points and I get to select a martial archetype. So I get to pick champion. Champions focus on the raw physical power honed to deadly perfection. Those who model themselves on this archetype combine rigorous training with physical excellence to deal devastating blows. Which means improved crit. 
plus a remarkable athlete, add half your proficiency bonus, round up to any strength, dexterity, or constitution check that you make that doesn't already use your proficiency bonus. In addition, both your jumping distance and climbing abilities increase too. That's not bad. Mountaineer. Mountaineers are trained to fight in difficult terrain and confined spaces. They are capable skirmishers and know how to take advantage of small spaces given the right equipment. Shield swipe. I get advantage on shove attempts when using a shield. Tunnel fighter. Using a shield, gain plus two AC when you have wall on one of your four sides, no diagonals. At higher levels, as a bonus action, you can force a switch of positions with an enemy within melee range by performing a strength versus strength or dex challenge. That's really good. And you can shove an opponent as a bonus action. This is really good. Spellblade. Spellblades are skilled with arcane magic as with their weapons. This versatility is a weapon in itself, often surprising enemies who tend to think an armored fighter cannot cast spells. Past wizard spells and cantrips of the Conjuration, Evocation, Transmutation, and Enchantment schools. Your weapon attacks count as magical against creatures that are resistant or immune to non-magical attacks. Into the fray, you can use any melee weapon you're proficient with as a spellcasting focus for your wizard spells and can perform their somatic components with the weapon instead of your hand. Additionally, being next to a hostile creature doesn't impose disadvantage on your ranged spell attack rolls. That's really good. Okay, um... Um... Okay, so do I shove things or do I start casting? And I think I start casting. Because casting fighter seems really good. Plus magic weapon. Spellblade it is. Look at these spells. Okay, cantrips. Um... Firebolt. Uh, acid splash. Ground, dancing lights, move at your command. Ray of frost, shine. An enemy you can see becomes luminous for a while. Oh, that's good. Why am I not using that instead of fire? Because firebolt's an offensive spell, that's why. Uh... So does 1d8 shock damage, inflict shock, can always use reactions. Uh, light source, 2 bright plus 4 dim, save each turn to cancel. Uh, sparkle ignites light sources. Ray of Frost inflicts hinder, which is move speed minus 2. Save to negate 1d12 poison damage. This is just light source. Acid Splash, 1d6 damage, save to negate. Uh, summon Dancing Lights for you to control. Duration 1 minute. And 1d10 fire damage. So, I guess I'll go with Firebolt and Poison Spray. Because, just big damage, why not? Sparkle lights might more than one source. Yeah, so I'm going to put that on my wizard and swap out Shocking Grasp for that because she shouldn't be near anything to use Shocking Grasp and she can use Firebolt instead most of the time. Let's see, you get three spells. Expeditious Retreat. Jump. And... I love the icon for hideous laughter. This is great. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Expeditious Retreat, Jump, and Feather Fall. So, personal buffs as opposed to control, because he doesn't, he's, doesn't have as high an int as Nyala. Let's level you up. New hit points, new spell slots, second level spells! Yeah! Look at this. 
Look at this. Second level spells. Okay, what do we get? Um, hmm. One second level spell. Oh. Oh! Oh, okay. So I could actually just drop all of those for this. <laughs> Holds, creates a sphere of four cells in radius inside which sound cannot exist. Oh, that's actually really good. I'm going to take that one. Calm emotions, blindness, aid, enhance ability, grant temporary powers to an ally for one hour. What is this? Bull strength. Oh! Okay. Uh, hold person, prayer of healing. Heal multiple allies at the same time. Ten minute casting time. Oof. Alright, uh, let's keep a uh, healing word, because that's really useful. Detect magic. Lick wounds. Shield of faith. How about... I'll take this just in case. Take that. There we go. Level up. Roguish archetype. So, we got Thief. Thieves have honed their skills in the larcenous arts. In addition to improving their agility and stealth, they learn skills useful for delving into ancient ruins, reading unfamiliar languages, and using magic items they normally couldn't employ. See, fast hands. Cutting action allows you to take the use... An object action. And second story work. Climbing no longer costs you extra movement. Difficult climb surfaces aren't considered normal for you, and you can jump longer distances. Dark Weaver. Uh, dark Weavers are trained by a secret society that extends throughout the kingdoms. They have developed techniques to improve their mobility in all three dimensions and master the art of poison crafting. Uh, when hitting an enemy on lower ground with a ranged weapon, add your proficiency bonus to damage. So you can snipe things from, a hot, from up high. And also climbing. And shadow casters are trained in arcane magic as well as in roguish abilities. They are tricksters who use magic to make their moves even more unpredictable and unstoppable. Some believe they don't really exist. I get spells from illusion, necromancy, etc. And shadow dodge. As bonus action, teleport to a cell you can see within five cells, recharges after a rest. Uh, let's see, also get Shadow Retribution. If you're targeted by a damaging spell, whether it damages you or not, you can cast a cantrip in reaction on the caster. Poisonous. When you hit with a melee weapon and deal at least one point of damage, your target must make a con or save DC 13 or they'll be poisoned for one hour and take an additional 2d6 damage. And Supreme Sneak, you have advantage on stealth checks. I'm gonna go with this one. This is really... This is really tempting. But I'm gonna stick with Dark Weaver because that extra damage seems really strong. We got spells, baby. So what do we get for spells here? Select new spell or cantrips to learn. Well, I know all the cantrips I need. In fact, I think I know all the cantrips. Scorching Ray. Magic Weapon. Darkness. Darkness. Mm, that's... Darkness is decent, but not great. But I could see use for it. Acid arrow. Dark vision. Spider climb. Magic weapon. I'm going to grab identify. And... What else can I use? What else can I use? Whole person. Invisibility. Invisibility is not bad. Knock. Levitate. Dark vision. Acid arrow. Flaming sphere. Scorching ray. It's hard. This is a hard pick.
Summon Flaming Sphere for you to control. See invisibility, grounds invisibility, sight. I'm gonna go with Flaming Sphere. Let's prepare spells. Oh, she doesn't know it. Okay. Well, I'm not really using Mage Armor, so let's take that off for Identify. And we're done here. Let's keep moving. Ooh, I got three food rations from a tree. Nice. Let's see if this place has been refitted so I can actually get people back from it. Or get stuff out of it, I should say. Is the outpost ready? Sure looks like it. Look at him go. Okay, uh, real quick, you... Oh, you can cast him without preparing him. Okay. Potion of Giant Strength? Mmm. Okay, I had another potion on you. Yes. Fire Giant. And your armor is magic. Leather armor plus one. Yeah, baby. How long does this last for? One hour? Okay, that wasn't worth it. Just hanging out for a minute doing rituals. This can go to you in that case. Uh, giant. Strength becomes 21. Strength becomes 25. That's really good. That's really good. That's actually so good. Okay, is there anyone here to talk to? Yes, there are quite a few people. Mogo the Poor. City Guard. Bertram. So there's only two people we're talking to. Bertram and Mogo the Poor. What are you up to, Bertram? Clear skies, friend. Clear skies, deputies. How's business? How's business been since we cleaned up the place? Not bad. Some folks are starting to explore a little further. Though this Sorak attack still has people nervous. Still, there's been no sign of them since. So, we mostly pretend it didn't happen. Wow. <laughs> Good for you. Just fucking forget all the people who died, okay. What's your name? I'm Bertram. Good to meet you, Bertram. <laughs> what was that camera angle? What was that camera angle about?
Oh, is that hole still in the wall up here? Can't tell. Eh, probably not. Oh, there's a fast travel point here. Oh, well. Oh, you are a general store. Cool. Oh, that reminds me. What do you... No free hand. And need spell focus or component pouch. Okay, well, I'll grab one of those real quick. So you just wear this. Ta-da! Now you can cast... Oh, that's why! That's why! When do you get when does he get that ability? I thought he had that ability. Hmm. How do I see How do I see my class information? Is it character? Uh yeah, no, no. Okay, that's one thing I don't know how to do. I don't know how to see the information I would have from leveling up. Because I remember I saw a thing that said I could get spells. Like, I could cra cast spells with my sword out, but I don't know where it is. Alright, let's get out of here. Nothing for me. Where's the exit? There's the exit. Bit of a distance. It's so goofy watching it just run around like that. Alright, to the possible Sorak base. How far is it? Two days? I don't have a lot of stuff, so let's go fast. Wow. Immediately. Let's hide from the bottle. Hide from the bottle. Hey, perfect. I found some food. Wanna get in there? Are you are you serious? How come it took me two days? I didn't get to complete a long rest either because I ran out of supplies. So, that's why you keep your rations high. It was one short. One short. So I'm still in good shape getting into this area. Uh, I seem to be fine. I just didn't recover anything, which is fine because I had a long rest prior to that. Huh. What the hell did we just stumble into? These aren't Sorax. They seem human. What exactly are they doing? What's it look like they're doing? They're digging something up. Hey. A tower of magic, perhaps. Owned by one of the masters of Manakalan's Arcaneum. Who are these people? Scavengers? Hard to say. I see no tent or flag signifying their allegiance. Well, there's one way to find out. Perhaps we should sneak a little closer. Or simply walk in and see how friendly they are. Curious, indeed. This appears to be the normal way to walk in. Oh, hold on, can I... 
Can I use my new spell? Oh, it's a positional effect. Oh. That's a waste. I was not going to do that. But that's interesting. So you could... I wonder... I wonder if you would be able to use that... To... Like... Would you be able to actually use that to... Keep people... From hearing you when you sneak? Because it didn't seem to be reducing that. It doesn't seem to be reducing the sound radius there. <coughs> Let's have you move front move through here, eh? something. There's also something over there. I might be able to get over to here. Ah, I see. Okay, let Oh, that guy's coming up here. Okay, I've got to be careful. Delphin through. Don't mind me. Just passing right through. This would probably be easier if I had invisibility, but oh well. Alas. Well. Alert! Alright. Cult fanatic, huh? I almost had it. I almost had it. If I had invisibility, this wouldn't be a problem, but eh. You know how it is. You know how it is. Let's see if I can maybe sneak into here real quick. What? Alert! How are you seeing me there? All right. no oh, there's a thing over there. I didn't even see that. So maybe I should sneak over there instead of that pile of junk that I'm looking at. L the literal pile of junk I'm looking at. I'll just give it one more shot and then I'll just, you know do the actual combat. Get over here, get over here, quick, quick now, quick, please do it right away. Oh god damn it, are you fucking serious? Okay, you sit there. this Huh
Oh, there's a chest down here. Hey, how about that? Also for you guys, there's something over here. Now oh, a chest. Scar and powder. And a hammer. And over here we have rations. Dragon rose. Acid. Moonflower. And a tragic love letter. A letter written in haste on a torn out scrap of paper. Oh, I can read it. Thomas, I do hope that these worms find you in good health, and I am sorry for not writing sooner. Requisitioning the necessary supplies and ensuring delivery is risky and dangerous. But it is well worth it, as your letters have become a shining beacon of hope in the dark prison, dark nights that haunt this prison. Your words of concern are not misplaced, as the wound of old is spreading my certain end through my feverish body. Days of labor are more torturous than the last, every disciplinary action leaving wounds that will never heal, and hunger has thinned the veil between reality and dream. I fear this letter may be my last. Long ago, you asked me what crimes led me here, and I professed my innocence. I could not risk that my l beloved thought any less of me. Your worship of my fortitude, determination, and spirit allowed you to draw strength in dark times. I could not allow that to be tainted by my past, but now in these final days I understand that I was hardly worthy of that affection. I will never fathom how I deserved meeting you in this crucible of my own making. When I was young, my mother's farm had fallen on hard times. I was sent to the lady's estate to work as a maid amongst deranged aristocrats. These years were filled with mischievous pranks, brute discipline, and cruel indignities. All of my scars and faults tell of those years. The lady never burdened herself with guilt, but put the blame solely on the shoulders of my mother. Repressed longings turned into despair, despair into resentment, and resentment into spite which culminated into a hate-filled second of violence my mother did not survive. And despite my faults, lies, and shameful past, you still loved me. I did not un fully understand why until the end. You did not need to know my past, for your love is unconditional. Please, my love, do not look at the past, but to the future. Do not fall for despair as I once did, but let the child birth of our love carry you to a new beginning. And while I'm at it, let's uh, read this one. Dragon's Den. Grand opening. Come one, come all. Join us on the 23rd of May for the grand opening of the Dragon's Den, Galavan's newest taver tavern, eatery, and bordello. Enjoy one of ten different ales or perhaps a vintage cask of wine from our cellar while you enjoy rack of meat and freshly baked bread. Need to satisfy a hunger of a different kind? Take a look at what we have to offer upstairs. Fancy a stout dwarf to rub out your tensions? We have a three to choose from. Prefer something a little pointier with a slender frame? We have you covered with the fairest elven beauties in the land. We even have a halfling if you're into that sort of thing. In celebration of our grand opening, we will also have a very special guest performer from 2112 until closing time. The famous bard Neil Beert will be giving a rare solo performance all the way from the Principality. Other opening day activities include axe throwing hosted by Runglia Silverbeard. Yes, we even have a bearded lady. Tarot reading by Elndurandil the Wise, Battle Chess Tournament, much, much more. We're located on the eastern edge of town, just past the town apothecary. And finally, a short poem from Lord Astroth, a renowned battle mage and soul proprietor. Stained velvet, dirty lace, naked glee on every face. Open up to your inner desires as you lay here by the fire. All are welcome here, without worry, regret, or fear. So pull up a chair and sit up straight. Some might even say it's fate. Oh, my beautiful lady, so fair, slim, and shady, I'll meet you upstairs after I trim these pesky nose hairs in the dragon's den. Bye, Lord Astroth Darkbane. And can I read this? No. Can I read this? Yes. Operational report to the first whisperer, investigation of the human clerics and their powers. Dear, my dear Andre, I have not heard... I have not had word of you since our desperate exodus to this dreadful world. My thoughts are with you, and I hope we will be reunited one day and live in peace at last. We hope for a friendly and peaceful world, far from the reach of our of the enemy. But alas, we have found only fresh enemies, and our seers tell me that the Sor Akath are not far behind. The war... Draft of Biography. Memories of Sh a Shadow Tamer by Air Merton, 1022 AC. 
There were only a handful of brave explorers, the first ever since the fall, to cross the mountains to the old empire. Their names, Kay, Annie, Betty, Arwen, Swain, Rihanna, and Hector. Together, they were stronger than all the monsters of the Badlands. Long before the Copperhead Road was found, they knew the paths and tunnels from Asgarth to Mankalon. They, bought, they brought back an old book with teachings of how to enchant primed weapons and sold it to a dwarf lord of the Gormsdottir clan. That was the start of it all. Soon, all eyes turned to the Badlands. The thirst for the forgotten secrets of the old empire was growing. The rest is scribbled. Anything else to take a look at here? I don't think I have anything... I got... Crafting scroll, scroll. I don't know why I didn't read that, but now I did. Uh, blood daffodil and magnesium. I feel like magnesium is going to be an important one. All right, they're far away. Okay, you have nothing. And you have nothing. Okay. Cannot save now. There we go. I was probably slightly too close to an enemy or something. Hmm. That is very curious. Now, how do I get up there? Because I can't sneak past this dude. That's for sure. Unless I can assassinate him. Yep, sure seems like it. Looks like there won't be any parlay. Are you serious? Yeah, it's my question. Okay, one, one less, one less thing, because obviously that doesn't work. I might as well just walk in the normal way, or maybe sneak around the outside. But like, yeah, I'll, I'll just move him back with the rest of the group, and then have everyone sneak around to the other side. I think. All right, go meet up with the rest of the group now, if you would. Too bad I can't climb, despite my ability to climb that I have, allegedly. Get back up. Yes, they can. Let's have everyone head over here. You can go this way. Calm down over there. So it's over in this direction. Oh, it's the edge of the map. That's what's over here. Good to know. I mean, I can do it from over here and remain stealthed while I attack. There we go. That looks good. So now you can get over here. For a similar effect. Passes. 
What? Seriously? Seriously? All right. No talking then. Seriously? Okay. Kill them. Looks like there won't be any parlay. Oh yeah, seems like it, huh? Too slow. So they see you and just come at you right away, huh? Nice. And up. And a miss. Nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. Just attack from up top. Go for the head. You'll die like the rest. Yeah, you'll die like the rest. Whatever, what he said. I can cast Expeditious Retreat on myself as a bonus action. That's pretty good. Let's right, so go with this and smack him. There we go. Problem solved. I am unbeatable. Well, don't go that far. Definitely don't go that far. I do wonder if there's a way to actually, like, stealth this. I, I Invisibility obviously would do it, but, like... Is there a point to stealthing this? That's mostly what I want now. Ooh, damn! Ah, you'll surely prevail. And not, I don't think this is worth it. Not for this. Ah! Nice. Good damage. I'll just hang out over here where it's safer. Safer. Pass. He's fine. Okay, never mind. Was a lucky hit. Never mind. Wow, okay. Talk about lucky hits. And unlucky hits. Very good. That was mine. What do you mean it was yours? It was hers, if anything. Oh, wait. That was a waste. Oh, God, that was a waste. Uh, I, I, I saw it wrong. I saw the numbers wrong is what happened there. I was like, oh, God, it, crit it did 11 damage. I'm almost dead. No, all it did was it did... Yeah, let's go. And a miss. Cool. Okay, you know what this looks for, though? This looks like a burning hands. Oh, you can actually aim it in 3D space, too. That's neat. Yeet. Oh, one foe down. Two foes, you mean. Very good. Bend the knee or perish. Very nice. Hooray. So 
What do you think? They look like people to me. What's that symbol there? The tattoo? Looks like an A. They all have it. Guess they're all part of the same club. Well, there's no reason to assume it signifies something sinister. Do you think it has anything to do with the Sorax? Damn it. We better be careful. <laughs> and don't forget, we need the head of a Sorak. I like how uh, the camera cut there because like, oh yeah, you were supposed to get this. What's this thing? We've got... A scroll kit! Some rations. A candle, I don't care. Studded leather. They're up here. Might as well take that scroll kit. And yeah, maybe the short sword's worth something. Oh, there's a thing over here too, I forgot about that. And what do we have here? A bunch of bows. You know what? Here, do this. Got any magic here? No. Any of that stuff you picked up magic? No. Okay. Well, let's go check out this door. No idea what that uh, check was for, but oh well. Find the third, fourth clues. Hmm. Yeah, yes. Oh, there's a dude here. Ooh, we got some foodstuffs, antitoxin, and this thing. Also, torches. I guess he can use those torches. You can take the food, or at least some of it. Really? Still overweight? Here, take that. Really? Still overweight? Uh, here, take this hide then, I guess. You are... okay. Please don't kill me. What are you doing here? I'm just a worker. Are you tattooed with an A? I, I, you don't understand. Are you one of them? One of what? I'm just trying to survive. I had no choice. Tell us about the tattoo. What does the tattoo signify? It's... I can't... Uh, uh. Well, he's dead. How is that possible? How is any of this possible? He was doomed from the start. Well, thanks for your vote of confidence there, bud. The worker's letter. What's this? Hmm, what is this? Uh, whisper parchment. Oh, there it is. Worker's letter. The others have given up, but I can escape, maybe. I hope I can reach home before them. They would kill everyone. I know they would. They would kill my children without hesitation. They're pure evil. Ah, track spotted. Okay. 
Ooh, a bit stealthier then. That's what I wanted. Ah, I was wondering why that wasn't showing up quite yet. All right. What on earth is this? Yeah, I figured. I figured that was going to happen. That was uh, unexpected. <laughs> Magic from a time long forgotten. Remind me not to take a dump in that hole. You really have to make jokes. <laughs> yeah, it's in my contract. Did Karen not tell you? Might be good to remember what these blue currents can do. Right? I have a feeling that's going to be very useful. And that makes a little pathway up there, I see. Now, actually, how do I get up there? Is it possible to? It should be possible to, right? Oh, yeah, it's totally possible to. You can just climb up the walls, which I didn't even notice. Thank God for autopathing. Inside, we have oil of acuteness, tiger drake scales, handy aversack, scroll of protection from good and evil. Let's give that to you. A crafting recipe, gold, and a prime longsword. Alright, so let's go to you. Where's that recipe? Let's read this. Very good. Sorak poisonous spine and five crossbow bolts. Simple enough. How do I use this? Oh, it's my actual backpack. Okay. Since I'm basically carrying any everything anyway. Let's give the light stuff to her. And then I'll take, like, the armor and the food. Give me that food. Give me this food. Yeah, that works. Handy Haversack is a good pickup. That's a very good pickup. <clears throat> it seems like we descend here. And then what? I descend further down? It's dark down there, so it's hard to see. Oh, look at all this. This is reminding me a lot about the demo area. Like, it's not the same zone, obviously. It's different, but it feels very similar. A lot of similarities. That one was like... I think there were orcs or something? Huh. That's weird. A library! Look at this place. I've never seen so many books. 
It would take a lifetime to read them all, even for an elf. Must be worth a fortune. If only we could get everything back to Kaer Kiflin. I see the point of the scavengers now. Why not keep this to ourselves? <laughs> we can leave extra unenchanted items for scavenger guild. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Which is what I'm gonna have to start doing, because I'm gonna start running low on space. Can I get over here? No. I can't get down here though. That's don't I don't trust this place. I feel like I'm gonna get some lizard in me in a second. Huh. Why there we go. Oh, there's a statue. Is this one of those rocks that... Well, there's a rock over there. So is this one of those rocks that what? You want to finish that sentence? Oh, I see. It's like a little puzzle to move this thing over. Interesting. So that just pushes it up. They push that one down. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna... I think I can stop being cautious at this point. It looks like this area doesn't have any enemies. Yet. And up. Hey, Tom. This is a big old area. It's kind of like a weird little maze. This is cool. This is really cool. It's a magic circle over there, too. Door. What's this? Beautiful craftsmanship. She looks like an empress. Hey. She doesn't bear the proper regalia. Not for a man of Callan. More likely she was a wizard, a master of the Arcanium. Arcanium. Could this have been her home? Possibly. Her bones are probably buried somewhere under all these bloody books. You're an idiot. Very cool. Well, that's clue one. <laughs> <laughs> What we got over here? Oh, we got a thing. Interesting. It's in remarkable condition, considering how long it's been here. Do you think it has magical properties? A spellbook that predates the cataclysm. And I should care because? Who knows what it might contain? But it looks to be locked. Take it. Perhaps someone in Kerr Kiflin will know how to open it. Yeah, but right now, we have more important shit to take care of. You're still gonna take it though, right? Yeah, good. That's what I thought. Is this a way to go? No, it is not. Huh. Curious. Ha! In the Badlands. I know. Expect the unexpected. No path to destination. Well, I can get there. Yeah, just like this. Uh. Yeah, the banter's really good in this. Although, I wonder how they set it up exactly, like... Is it... Hmm. Okay, so get back up here first. How do they set up the banter, though? Like, is it... Each character have their own line? Like, I have no idea how they set this game up to work with the different character variations. Hmm. Curious. Very curious. Oh, I'm blind. That's what it was. <laughs> that works, too. 
Got a thing here. You see that? Is that a Sorak? Sure is. Don't be ridiculous. This is pre-cataclysm. Guess Before not. Before anyone knew what a Sorak even was. It doesn't have the big spines. It's a dragon. Oh! It's no bigger than a man. It's standing just like a human. Ever seen a dragon do that? Ever seen a dragon at all? How would you know? Stop losing time. It's just a statue. It's, it's, it's really good lines. But, like, how do they set it up? It, this is honestly kind of boggling. Mind-boggling. It's crazy. Okay, how do I go over there? No path to destination. Hmm. Oh, I see. Aha! Hmm. Curious. Curious. Curious indeed. Alright, well, let's get up here and take care of this thing. Oh, they just climbed uh. the wheel? A little goblin. Well, that was uh, awkward. You two gonna. You two gonna. Gonna be. You gonna come over here? Gonna be good. Are those. Web. There we go. That was weird. That was a little awkward. Well, I used two feather fathings. I'm glad I picked up those spells. Aha! Ooh, there's a chest up here. How about that? Uh huh. There's chest up here too. There's chest and stuff up from here. Spiders. I'm gonna ready an action ranged attack. Block that one. Nice. It's not that dark here, is it? Light is with us. Great, missed. Lovely. Heh, <laughs> crit. Sucker. Wow. You've endured worse. Nice, nice. Let's action surge this one so I kill it. Wait till the next one. Can I cast a spell? No. Ooh, there's a lot of enemies here. You know what this looks like? Looks like I need to move slightly. Cast a spell. Burning hands, baby!
succeeded on that too. Ugh. Is this like a ghost spider or something? You like it? Ah, damn it. Uh, block that one. Don't bully my wizard. Oh, that was good. That was a good one. Okay, good lucky. Why are they all going for my wizard? Yeah, that one wasn't. Unfortunately. It's fine. There we go. That one's dead. And here, done. Okay, that was good. That was good. Not a lot of damage. Okay, we're still- we're fine still. Okay, I'm gonna just... abort that. Five foot back. Well, not really five foot. Ow! Are you fucking for real? God damn it. And I rolled with disadvantage, so I missed. Sick. Crit miss. Always nice. Now we can see again, and I'll healing word. Yala. So she's not dead. Fucking seriously? Are you fucking for real? Attacking her while she's down? Are you? Are you Hold fucking it. serious? There's a success. I can't. Big hit on her. Uh, level to restoration, silence. Smack the ghost spider, I suppose. That battle resists it, huh? Oh, come on, really? This is not doing a whole lot of damage. And you missed. Lovely. Oh, what are these are rolls? Okay? At least it's not doing a giant amount of damage. Okay, it's a little unfortunate that he's sitting right in the way of it. Maybe different spell. Kill the ghost spider. Thank you. Impressive move, my friend. Uh, 
Good, it's dead. Good, it's dead. There, jeez. Spectral spiders. What do we have? Spider venom glands. Crossbow bolts. What does this have? Final clue. Another statue. These guys really love themselves. Hey. Now this is an emperor. A famous one too, Lerithir Imradir. He was emperor at the time of the cataclysm. Good job managing the trouble, mister. Quest complete. These books floating around. Uh, I can't uh, grab them. All right, what do we have? A uh, superb warhammer. Is this a one-handed weapon? One d eight. Okay, where to next? Where to next? Uh, push this thing over, I suppose. That's next on the list, because it's right here. That'll get me access to this section. Ah! Very nice. And now, I can bring myself over to here. In addition to dealing with whatever this teleportation circle thing is. And what is this? Huh. Well, that didn't do a damn thing. Did you really think it would open the door? We need to be smarter about this. Think it through. Clearly. Find a way to open the door. Oh, uh, you have to go all the way around. Jesus. Okay. Well, let's let them do their thing. How about this? Hey, how about that, huh? Convenience. What happens if you fall down there? <laughs> and that'll take me back here. Perfect. All right, now, what's another section I didn't really explore? Got that chest. I never did get up here. No path to destination, huh? How about for the two people who can climb? Like the dwarf and the rogue. Looks like the path to the destination is over th this way, perhaps. Now let's get everyone over here first. No sense in leaving them to hang out. Let's let those two catch up. I don't know why they're so slow about it. This is a cool area, though. I like this. This is a very cool-looking area. Uh. 
And then I've also got to get over here somehow. No, 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 don't do that. I want it up here. I'll let the two who can get up there do it. Apparently, since they can do that. What a fantastic leap. It wasn't hard to get there, was it? Let's grab this. Ooh, money! A magic armor! Chainmail 16. And also a fancy battle axe. Primed and ready to go! You gonna come over here or what? Oh, they can't make that jump, huh? Really? You two can't make this jump? No? Guess not. Alright. In that case, you are just going to pass this stuff over to your compatriot over here. Since your inventory is currently full. Now, let's see if I can get them over here. Right over this one, then. Get going, you two. What do we have? We have... Ooh, Fog Cloud. Short Sword of Acuteness. Battle Axe of Acuteness. And a prime chain shirt. Very nice. Brimstone viper scales and refined oil. This one requires a prime short sword and oil of cuteness. You know, that makes perfect sense. That also makes perfect sense. So how would you get over there? I guess... Hmm. There has to be a way to get over there. Can you can you actually firebolt this thing? Clearly you have trained well. No. No, you can't. So how do I get this thing down? How do I reach that? No path to destination. Unless I could, like, leap from here to there. I do have leap on him, so might as well try it. Like, if I could leap from here to here, I could just grab that, push this over, and that'll suit... That'll do it for me. What? Okay, you know what? Let's let's do this. Cast a spell. Jump on yourself. Still no path to destination. Okay, well, if that's not going to work. You know, I wonder... This feels like the kind of game... I'm pretty sure... Like, it feels like the kind of game where you'd actually be able to use Fly to move around. I'm not sure how they'd actually, like... Get that functional? 
But it definitely feels like it would. There's, I feel like there's got to be a way in the back, right? Like this, this looks suspicious. I feel like there's got to be a way back there. Anyway, uh, let's head to the library part. And I gotta head over to here, I think it was. Yes. Fly is a higher level spell? Okay. That, that's what I figured, but... No, maybe... Because Levitate only does horizontal... Vertical motion, so maybe... I don't know. I don't know. Okay, what's this? What kind of runes are those? Enchanted runes from the ancient imperial period. It's said that they had eight schools of magic. Each is represented here, all as equals. This place is astounding. Yeah, you could tell that to the Sorax right before they cut us to frickin' pieces. Activate the runes. Magic rune puzzles. Find the hidden runes that are barely shining on the ground and step on them to activate them. Okay, that seems easy. I stepped on some magical rune. I guess there's a reason for that. Where's the next one? Maybe it's not in order? Good work. Oh, I see. That's like... Maybe? I don't know. Another one! Here! Hmm. Oh, there's probably one hidden under here. Huh. There isn't. Honestly, I'm a little shocked. Where are the other runes? Where are the other runes in here? Got three of them. Where's the last one? Or where's more of them, I should say? Am I stupid? I may be stupid. Just don't see it anywhere. Okay, I did the second, third, and fourth runes, but where's the first rune? Ah. Well, let's try pushing this over. Maybe that has something to do with it. Ah, oh, that, yeah. Uh, nothing. Very funny. <laughs> Aha! Found one. What do we got? Door open? Door open! Very nice. We did it! Was that insane puzzle the work of some long dead Manakalan wizard? Probably. Even from the tomb, that magical arsehole is messing with us. <laughs> Alright, get over there. Let's go. Aha! Uh -huh, long rest! Ooh, there's stuff back here, though. Let me take another little nappy. Let's see what this is about. Mana lamps. In Mana Kalan ruins, you may come across these mana magical lamps. They use magical power and cast a brighter and more reliable light than torches. Any magical attack will activate them, even a cantrip. Did we not say silent? Crown room. S 
stay hidden. They're here. Sorax. What else could they be? You ready to do this? Get in position, hit them hard, and take them by surprise. Ready. Well. Before I do that, let's take a quick nap. And also turn off the lamp I have, because that's not helping things. All right, let's go. Nope, didn't want to do that just yet. Start a rest. And then we'll go deal with the Sorax. All right, prepare spells. Flaming Sphere will be useful. I can attack and identify off there. Put on to mage armor. Because I can ritual all these ones. For you. Silence is not gonna be useful coming up. Let's do this one. All right, let's rock. Mm, don't really have much in the way of buff spells. Like, everyone's a slot caster, so. Oh, yeah, you don't have that, do you? How long does this last for? Let's cast this on one, two, and you. Very good. Then I'll save this one in case. Cure, detect magic, shield of faith, healing word, inflict wounds, bless, cure wounds. Should be good. Let's move in here. See if I can take him by surprise. Oh! Stay hidden. They're here. Sorax. What else could they be? You ready to do this? Get in position. Hit him hard. Take him by surprise. Ready. Interesting. So the lines are actually all read out previously. Anything I can actually use to mess with them? Doesn't look like it. Alright, well, everyone get your bows out. You do whatever. And for you... Let's say we... Let's do this first. Let's use these poisoned arrows. Let's put that there. Why not? Uh, didn't I pick up more poisoned arrows or something? No, those are regular arrows. Those are crossbow bolts. So that's not useful. <laughs> um... I can give those to you, actually. Uh, we have corrosive bolts. That's what I picked up. You have a couple arrows, but it doesn't... You don't even use arrows, so... I'll just swap these two. There we go. Let's go. Hold up, let me 
Let me move these people into position first. I could probably cast Grease right here and just mess them up as they come up, which might not be a bad plan for round two. Here we go! Combat time! Let's begin! Oh boy, two damage. Wahoo! They spotted me. That's unfortunate. I guess I have disadvantage because I attacked? I think that's how that goes. Is it dead? I think I killed it. Nice. Round two begins. Looks like a chieftain of some kind. Or something, I don't really know. Well, you know what they say. I actually don't know if they say anything in particular when a uh, giant fireball is involved, but you know, whatever. That's unfortunate. Sor Akath Acolyte of Sortar. Oh, he cast Fly! Holy shit! That looks real goofy. Oh, man. Are you serious? Well, cast Spiritual Weapon. Why not? You know what? It's right here. Let's just smack it. And roll a six. Great. Targets three quarters cover. This one doesn't. Next time. Ah, well. Probably should cast Grease here at some point. Flaming Sphere over here to help out. You know, you. Let's cast it right here. Light it up. Guiding Bolt, you fuck! Oh god, this is bad. Uh, he took a lot of damage off of that one. And it rolled a one! Nice!
Maybe I should have prepared Guiding Bolt for this one. Um, this is a touch. Second wind, because I need that healing pretty badly right now. Are you fucking Come serious? On. Nice. Okay, that's a good hit. Good hit. Really? Okay, move this over here so it starts burning them. Okay, magic missile him. Shielded, you fuck! <laughs> Scorching ray! God. Yeah. Please actually hit. Thank you. That's a good damage when it hit. Nice! Maybe that was a bit of a waste, but it's fine. to poison and piercing damage. Okay. All right, both of you guys uh, have uh, have this. Get toasty. Whole two damage. Nice. Really? God, he's almost dead. Uh, what was that? Blindness? Oh, fuck. Oh, that's one miss. Much better. Shit. 
shielded? Oh, bad luck. There, that one's dead. We're gonna move over here, so I'm out of the way. Good. Move that flaming sphere over here, just keep him keep him busy. Just keep him going. Only the last blow matters. <laughs> yeah, you keep telling yourself that. Be no longer shielded. That's a positive thing. Get that spiritual weapon over there. Okay, let's see. I want to swap to this. Cast a heal spell. Nope, not that one. I wanted to cast... Cure wounds on Bjork. Can I not? Over here. Cast. Actually. Go. You are a value. Okay, company. that wasn't as much as I had hoped it would do. Crit! Yeah! Okay, let's do my cunning action. I'll dash over to there. I'll be able to use this to stab him. Here. Death reaches nice. Mm. Feels good, man. That feels good. Crit miss. Thank you. Ah, I see. That's when it ends its turn next to it. So he double healed himself. We bring light and dark. Where's that spiritual weapon at? I'm just having this guy get attacked by the the PAL weapons right now. That stab him. Another yeah, story. that turned out way better than I could have hoped. Honestly, can I hit him from here? Yes, I sure can. Crit? Well, fuck. I 
I guess this thing can only move or attack at the same time. It can't do both. It's lucky crit. Good kill. There we go. There we go. They didn't die easily. They bleed just like we do. Mm. Now we just need one of their bloody heads. Okay, hold on. Is he gonna get up in a second? There. Okay, before I grab that, let me just grab this other junk. Ooh, yes. Ooh, definitely yes. Very definitely yes. Corrosive bolts are always nice. Uh, sure. Let's take everything except that torch. Oh, and there's a chest here. Can't forget about that. Scroll of bark skin, scroll of contagion, and a regular crossbow bolt. Oh yeah, do you have the... Are you currently using... You don't. Alright, tech magic, go! This abyss moss and an angry violet. Let's just take this uh, sword here. This primed sword. All right. Anything else around here I need to grab? Oh, there's a thingy over here. Whatever this is. I'm aware the artifact is there, but I'm not getting it until I deal with whatever the rest of this room looks like. I don't like it either. Oh. Huh. I could have used this to sneak all around the place, it looks like. Probably use this to, like, focus the guys in. Instead of having them come up the stairs, which worked out in the end, I think. Okay, doesn't seem to be anything else around here. All right, let's go. Time to grab the crown of the magisters. Would you look at this? A crown of some kind? They seem to keep their distance from it. Maybe it's cursed. Look what I found. Let me take a look. Look what I found? Oh, it's a scroll. Looks like ancient Timarian. If you find it, send for... This appears to be a name. That has to be a Sorak name. They were protecting it. It must be of great value to them. Okay, Bjorn takes the Take crown. Then. Sure. Yes, I understand. Who are you talking to? Wait, what are you doing? Are you crazy? Why did you put it on? We have no idea what it does, whether it's evil or anything. What? I... I, it, I just kind of... had to. We're supposed to share the loot, by the way. Perhaps we should rest before we head back. I say we go. Before the owner of that unpronounceable name shows his ugly face. The mission is done, after all. Is it? Did someone cut off a Sorax head? All right, then. I'll do it. The sooner we go, the sooner we can get back to Kerikiflin. 
After you, friends. That's true. I want to get out of this place. Can I just get out of here? Can I just leave? Should be able to, right? There, fast travel out of this zone. Yes, there is. There is indeed a fast travel out of this zone. So let's hit that. Wee! <laughs> All right, time to get out of here. Job done. Now, before I stop, I will go see what the deal with this crown is. But first, Carol M. It's my tracks. The mood is somber. Ooh, campsite. Campsite scenes. You look a little pale. Is something wrong? I don't feel too good. I knew that old crown was cursed. You don't know that. Just get rid of it. No, no. We need it. Need it? For what? For its power. I can feel it. Deep inside. I like how it looks like a bunch okay? of eyebrows. I just need to rest for a bit. Yeah, I'm not feeling too good either. I'm exhausted as well. Maybe the curse has affected us all. Stop it. Don't be ridiculous. Fine, let's rest for a while. Set up camp. You seem to have already done so, I'm just going to say. We appear to have already set up camp. Yeah, Carolam! Okay, let's see if I can pick up anything from the scavengers here. And also tell them to go to Carole to uh, that place, clear it out. Let's see, we've got any guards. I guess Bertram? You the one I talked to about this? <laughs> it's on his head there. That's actually kind of funny. Clear skies, friend. Clear skies, deputies. We should go. Uh, city guard, city guard. Mogo the poor. Really? No? Nothing? Nothing? Nothing at all? Okay. Oh, this. This is how I do it. Hmm. Oh, they're actually going to the locations. Oh, interesting. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Check this out. Oh, yes. Um, maybe this. Maybe that. Uh, I think the rest of this can probably go. Yeah, that's just going to get converted directly, I think. Let's get those rations, because I might need them on the way back. Get some of those crafting items. And the rest of that can sell. Perfect. Very cool. Very cool. That's, so that's how that works. You just go talk to the thing directly. Or you don't go talk to it. You just click on the thing directly. And that just uh, lets you get your money. That's a great system. More games should do that. All right, let's make tracks again. I've got plenty of food. Death Squad, a group of hostile creatures has managed to surprise you. Ooh, I got 
some good nits. I still have the aided condition. Curious. Okay, so we got skeleton archer and two skeletons and the skeleton enforcer. I don't know why the skeleton archer is moving. Nice roll. Block that attack going in on Anton. I don't know how that works, but it does. Still hit because I rolled a 14. Let's just... It's disadvantage. Why is it disadvantage? Am I threatened? Why do I have disadvantage? Range attack with enemy nearby. Oh. So I just do this. Oh. Oh, that. Right, of course. I forgot I had the other skeleton there I hadn't managed to kill. Nice move. And did very little damage. Well, at least that one also did very little damage. Very nice. And a miss. Yes, indeed. Well struck. I'm not even sure who that was attacking, but it doesn't matter. Wow. Amazing. Perfect. Okay, now these guys can bow up. Like the rest. Bow up. Noise. I got an achievement. Shish kebab. All right. Uh, let's get out of here. I don't think he said anything worth really grabbing, but hey, why not? Let's check its magic. Maybe something's magic. Nope. Nothing magic. Alright, where's the exit? Uh, where's the exit again? How do I get out of here? Is it this way? Oh, it's right there. Right. 
I wasn't camping, I didn't think, but whatever. Well, I guess I was camping. Excellent. So let's get this thing turned in. Back to the bin. Hmm? Travel interrupted. We did it. We brought back proof. How do you feel? Better. It might have been a simple fever after all. What about the crown? You know the council will probably take it. No. We can't hide the fact that we found it with the Sorax. It's our loot. Ours. Jesus we Christ, have to dude. declare anything of historical value. And they have the right to buy it. And if it's priceless? Come on. They can do whatever they want. Sure. I guess we'll see. Who fought the Sorax? I saw them. Oh, that was a weird line read. Or line timing, I should say. Hey, Ko, it's been a bit. How are you doing? Lord Karen. Ah, deputies. I see you found some nice, shiny loot. So, have you brought us the head of a Sorak? One head, slightly damaged. Marike, preserve us. I'm sorry I asked. You should have seen it alive. I can only imagine. When's the next council meeting? When? But now, of course. The rumor of your return has already reached the palace. They're waiting for you. Oh, well, that's they convenient. Are. Well, more for this. But come on. Now there's a trophy. And by the way, who's crazy now? All right. You were right and we were wrong. They do exist. Happy now? Kid, I've seen more than anyone in this town, yet nobody seems to believe me. <laughs> Maybe it's a curse. The curse of being surrounded by idiots. Thanks, If you Co. don't mind, Merton, we have business to attend to. Oh, his name's right. Merton. Say hello to the old lady for me, Karen. <laughs> Who's this guy again? Arwin Merton. He used to be a legend. The first scavenger, they say. But now, well, <laughs> you can see for yourself. Who's this old lady? Just ignore him. Let's go. Ask Annie about Merton? Your thoughts, Dean Facek? I, uh, well, it looks very much as the scriptures describe. Well then, it seems we have a problem. It's a disaster. We all know what the Sor Akat did on Tirmar. There's something else. What? A crown? Hmm, interesting. A very nice find. We don't want to sell it. Why not? You know we pay well. We want to keep it. I'd like to take a look at it, though. Come on. Let them take a look. I don't know why he's so protective of this thing. I guess that's the point, isn't it? Any ideas? It's quite massive. Clearly Imperial in style. These ruins remind me of the Imperial Schools of Magic. I have a spell I'd like to cast on this. My lords, this deputy is clearly unwell. What?
Can't t take off the crown for too long, can he? What happened? You passed out. Where are we? The Temple of Einar. Marshal Beric Sunblaze himself invited us to stay here. We certainly made an impression on the Council. They believe you're attuned to the Crown, that oh. you can't be separated from it. Ah. What? So... so it is cursed? They're not sure. All these big brains. And they're stumped. They cast spells on the Crown, on you. Between that and the Sorax, we cause quite a fuss out there. They'll reconvene the Council when you're ready. But trust me, there's a lot of people who want to talk to you Ooh, first. That leg freaked out a little bit there. Alrighty. So that, I think, is where I'm going to leave that, though. Where am I? Where am I right now? There's the temple. Ah, this guy. Lord Sunblaze, thank you for your hospitality. It's the least we can do for the deputies who proved that there are still Sorax on Celasta. You've proved we cannot relax our vigilance. Did you find anything else that could help us track them? There was a parchment. That was a weird read. His voice was very stilted there. If you find it, send for the char. You can read that? That last word, it's not Tamarian. It's in the Sorakath tongue. I knew it. It means general. You were wise to run. Also, the fanatics we fought near that old tower. They all had this tattoo on their arm. It seems to support the idea that they were working for the Sorax under duress. It is indeed one of their ways. Now this is the A of Erevet. Can you enlighten us? Between the myth and what we've seen, it's confusing. Of course. We paladins and clerics of Einar are the guardians of these memories. Our ancestors fought the war against the Sorakath. Their god, Sortar, gave them dark powers of treachery, mind reading, and shape changing. They infiltrated the human society, corrupted the hearts of men. At some point, everyone was suspected to be a Sorak in disguise. Distrust broke humanity. Sortar had won. He corrupted even Erevad, god of the Inquisitors. The gods themselves decided to run away from Tirmar. They opened the rift for the humans to escape to Celasta. Many of them didn't make it. It was a tragedy. At the sight of the rift, thousands of Sorak tried to cross. Sortar himself tried. The rift was closed in a gigantic blast. Our kings and heroes, Manakalan's masters of magic, were all wiped out. So, how could Sorax have survived, escaped, and then thrived on Celasta? I suppose that's another one of their tricks. But for those who had survived the war, the Exodus, it was paramount to stay vigilant, to keep the memory alive. The memory of what Sorax were, what they could do, so that if one day they were to return, we'd be ready. I'm sorry to say, after a thousand years, only a few of us remain. Now, most people believe Sorax are a mere legend, but you brought us proof the Sorax are not extinct. Why do people follow them? How do they get people to worship them? They get into people's minds, learn their darkest secrets, their fears, their shameful desires. With that, they can blackmail, corrupt, and finally, recruit. It's much easier for them than to duplicate, and very efficient. We fought different ones. Do you know more? 
The bulk of their army are foot soldiers with poisoned spines. They breed a caste of albino priests able to cast spells. Oh! Some of them are deadly assassins, invisible, venomous. Others are giant brutes. The scriptures talk of elite warriors, anti-paladins, the Shikath. Ooh. Oh, look at that! Look at that! That's great! That's super cool. Can they really impersonate people? It's been proven, though it's a long process. They used to kidnap a target, study it for weeks, sometimes months. One of their chosen ones would transform into a perfect duplicate. Upon death, they would return to their original form. Well, that's all very scary, but thanks, it's going to help us. You're welcome, deputies. If you find anything else connected to the Sor Akath or their allies, bring it to the temple. Talk to Chaplain Delan Lark. You will be well rewarded. Whenever you're ready, the council will meet again. Wow, that's a lot of... That's actually a lot of really good info. Is this the way out? Nope. Jesus Christ, more people. It's an honor, deputies. Who are you? My name is Maddie Green Isle. I work for the Tower of Knowledge. I'm just a junior aide in the council, but if you ever need to contact my superiors without going through official channels, just see me at the Tower, downtown. Why the sudden interest in us? You proved yourselves in the Badlands. Now, we in the Tower of Knowledge value skilled adventurers. If you find anything of historical value, we'll pay well. And, you know, if things go well, we might share some of our own secrets. All right, all right, we'll think about it. Ooh, okay. And we got a new person over here, too, who's gonna talk to me in a second. There we go. Uh, <clears throat> Can I ask for a minute of your time, deputies? Uh, we're in kind of a hurry. I know. I won't delay you long. My name is Hedlund Shorespell. I represent the Arcaneum. And the Arcaneum belongs to the New Empire. Do you really want to be seen talking to us? Uh, my business is magic, not politics. And no, I have no quarrel with you. You may not see us Imperials as friends, but we take the Council very seriously. We are particularly interested in anything from the Old Empire that you might find in the Badlands. Anything from the Manakel and Era Arcaneum. Even more so. Oh, of course, we'd pay you handsomely for this crown, although I know that's not possible. You're smarter than you look. Also quite indifferent to mockery. <laughs> anyway, we have an unrivaled trove of magical and other knowledge. Think it's over. You can find me at the Gravekeep's cask. Really? Not at the embassy? What can I say? I love Martel's beer. Even though it tastes like donkey piss. <laughs> and away he goes. What? How did he... That was our joke on the first day we met. Was he spying on us? Maybe he just agrees about the taste. <laughs> oh, that's true. Okay, we're finally back outside. So... Any minute now... Would you have a moment? Oh, deputies? Jesus Christ. All right, but make it quick. I'll do my best. I am Joyel Foxeye from the Circle of Denantar. The same magic school where the princess studies? Exactly. Is she a good student? A powerful wizard? Why do you care? That's not for me to say. And you seemed to be in a rush? Fine. I just want you to know that our Grand Master Edvan Denantar has noticed you. He talked a lot. For sure. He's a man of great authority. He'd like you to know that our doors are open to you if you'd care to visit us. You can find me at Sunblaze Court. Interested in Badlands treasures, I suppose. Like everyone else. Well, 
If you ever come across old spell books or spell scrolls, we'd love to see them. In return, we have the largest collection of spells and potion recipes you could ever hope to see. More than the Arcanaean? They would disagree, but yes. Now, if you were to prefer feeding the new Empire's wizards with more magical knowledge than the Principality, that would be a troubling choice to many on the Council. Neutrality means we don't treat you any differently than we treat them. Of course, neutrality is the rule. Good day to you, deputies. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, so that's the temple quarter. I'll go talk to Anne real quick. But very interesting. Okay, so that's how this is going to start going. Like, you'll be able to... They kind of explained this before, but like... Clear skies, my friends. Do you know Arwen Merton, the so-called first scavenger? Oh, of course. yeah. That's it? Merton. It's a painful topic for me. I'd rather not talk about him. Fair enough. Okay. Well. If you want to find out more about Kill Carnage. And. <laughs> and the rest of the mystery surrounding the Crown of Magisters, which I seem to have picked up. Go pick up Celeste yourself. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to continue streaming this. I probably will be continuing to play it. Because, like, this is, a, this is a good game. Like, legitimately, this is great. Like, I don't know if I'm going to keep streaming it. But, before I finish for today... I had one last thing I want to check out. Because I've been going for six and a half hours. It is almost 11 o'clock at night. And I've eaten one thing today and I really need to eat. So let's check out this thing. Here's a new user location. Let's call this the tester room. Uh, min character level one. Max level is 10. Interesting. Environment Necropolis, Stronghold, Evan Palace, or Lava Caves. Visual mood Crypt, Inferno, or Strange. Ambient music. Interesting. So you can create rooms like this. I can make a small room that feeds into it like that. I can make a turn like this. I can put this into a hallway over here maybe. Then we do this. Let's put a let's put a torch right here. A pushable block. there put a tomb here or something and a statue three walls shift to place multiple props okay Let's try this. So, play test. Location must have an entrance. So, where do I set the entrance? Trap virtual lore. Ooh, what's this? Entrance, there we go.
So let's try it. Ready? So I just made my dungeon. What is it going to look like? Uh-huh. So there's this wall I put down here. Let's uh just have you light this up so I can actually see what I'm doing. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's all red lighting now. So there's the pushable crate. Ah! There are those walls. There's that torch. Wait, no, that's the mausoleums. I put the torch. There it is. The light is with us. Oh, it appears to be inside the wall there. Okay. Got like the mausoleums, the statues. Very cool. Very cool. And of course, because everything's locked to a grid, there's no fear of falling out through the world there. But that's super cool! You can do... It looks like you can do fairly, like, expansive stuff, too, with that. Like... Right here, let's open a test room. Like, uh, let's see here. Test room... Activator links, light sources, keyboard shortcuts. You can add a lore area. Stepping to this area will display text. Gadget displays lore, lore plaque, area activator, entry activators. Hidden doors, pushable blocks, falling chandelier. Exit. Can lead the party to another user location. Ah! So this, this is super cool. Obviously, you can't, like, make a custom campaign yet from the looks of things. Like, new adventure, you got... Change campaign, user campaign. I don't know how to do this. Oh! So you... It, You might be able to do, like, an outdoor campaign area, but it might be tricky. You could definitely do a dungeon crawl, though. That's super cool. Super cool. Alright, so that is where I'm going to leave that. That is, again, Solasta Crown of the Magister. Go check that out on Steam. It's like, what, 20 bucks? Let me go check. Solasta. It is... Oh, it's 40 bucks on Steam. Forget what I said there. Uh, anyway, $40 on Steam. Very cool game. Definitely check that out, because I am... I am super into this. I'm actually thinking of... I may decide to continue playing this on stream. We'll figure... We'll see. We'll see. Probably not in the same time slot, because I just played Pathfinder yesterday, and that's a lot of RPG to go through. So, again, uh, next week, maybe I'll play this. I might play it on Friday instead. We'll see. Tomorrow is Rain on Your Parade. Just a fun little game. Anyway, uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking out the game with me. And see you next time.